we go. Here we go. This show sucked. Did I say that yet? I believe we... I want to have a definitive start to this report so that when it's a future adrenaline flush, we will have in its entirety the review, including my statement that this show sucked. It opened up with recap of last week. They showed Jarrett coming out and giving Angle a title match against Sting at Destination X, or however it worked. And then Jarrett opened up the show doing a promo saying Kurt Angle had been suspended for an entire week without pay because he'd attacked Jeff Jarrett last week. This was his punishment. (laughs) And I thought, shouldn't you maybe take his title shot away? You do that? Shouldn't you, I don't know, I, I think the title shot would have been the number one thing. That's what Angle cares about most. Are they having a missy random week of impact? When someone misbehaves, you, you, you take away what they want most, right? I, I, I suppose. If Angle's making millions and millions of dollars, who cares about a week with no pay? He'll be fine. He'll be totally all right. So, anyway, they uh, they didn't take his title shot away. They spent him for a week without pay. I was just thinking that as a baby face, if you wanted to punish a heel, you would challenge him to meet you in the ring or something. Well, that was later. Jarrett's response was to punish this heel by banning him from the building. That was his plan. So then Don and Mike opened up the show, and Mike said he'd heard Don was going to explain why he walked off the show last week. And Don said, yes, last week I said some things that were out of character, things that might have hurt my friends. Fans and family, if only I could go back, he said. If only I could go back to last week, I'd do it all again. He said he was right. Mike today was still a big fucking prick. And he said until someone told him otherwise, he was still part of the announce team. He wanted everyone at home to sit back, grab a beer, and enjoy themselves. And Don's delivery was awesome. Yes. This is so bad. <laughs> I don't care. It's so bad. <laughs> the very moments of TNA entertains me, whether it's good or bad for business, is irrelevant. It entertained me. And Don West was a, gave an A-plus performance here. As he, Here's he, the problem. He went from sincere apologist to, to, to raving lunatic. The problem was that he gave a great performance here. But then as the show went on, I don't know if he forgot he was supposed to be a heel or what... <laughs> But there were instances where he was praising baby faces and chastising heels, and and I'll talk more about that actually. That's actually that's not my biggest complaint about this, but yes, uh, I, I, for the for the moment, let's just say that Don's uh, uh, heel personality came and went. Foley came out, called out Sting, and needed a promo once again, talking about the most important moment in his career which was when Sting came out of a refrigerator box, climbed up onto the... or when Foley came out of a refrigerator box, climbed up onto the middle rope and dropped a big elbow on Sting. And yes, this was as specific as he got. He did mention it was 18 years ago. He did say it was 18 years ago before many members of the audience were born. So, he said that it was because he dropped the elbow on Sting, of all people, that he had his entire career. He had all his titles, his money... His books, everything. It was all because he dropped an elbow on Sting after he came out of a box 18 years ago. Right. Well, if he had dropped a box on, for example, or dropped an elbow on, for example, one of the Ding Dongs, or maybe Ivan Koloff. You know what's stupid That's a big impact. If you've at least got footage of something that you show people, maybe you don't have to specify what was going on. But when you don't even have that, <laughs> helps to have a little detail. Maybe, maybe what show it was. Maybe even what dr- match it was. How about a dramatic reenactment? Who won? He is someone who looks Anything. like Cactus jumping off the ropes. I'm just someone who looks like Sting. So he 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 begged Sting to return to TNA after the match with Angle, win, lose, or draw. And then the Mafia came out without Angle because, of course, he was banished from the building. And uh, he basically said, Kevin Nash said, Seven, Kevin Nash said, we need to stick together. We need to be a family. We need to be a team. Kurt is crazy, but he's our madman. Before that, he he said, Steve. Kept talking about Steve. Steve. He pointed to Foley. He's office. Office. He's a stooge. Stooge. Lingo. Is Brent Kremen writing his promos here? (laughs) That's quite possible. Steve. So, anyway, he said, Steve, just come on. Let's, uh, Let's be pals here or whatever. And Steve got mad and... And uh, it said he hated Angle. And anyway, the whole point is Nash said, Sting, if you leave before we accomplish our goal, 
Maybe you can live with that, but we can't. What was their goal, by the way? To get respect from the young guys. <laughs> what a goal. So apparently Steve, Sting, I almost called him Steve, apparently Sting failing to work with Kurt Angle means he has given up on getting respect from the young guys. So then they cut to the back and Kurt showed up. He yes. was just walking around. Kurt was just walking around. Do -do -do. Suspended for a week without pay, and here he is at the building. Of course, <laughs> what a shocker. So then we had an Ultimate X rough cut with the guys talking about the stupidest stunts in the history of the match. <laughs> That would have, should have been what they called it. They were, in fact, quite stupid. AJ's flip bump is still the dumbest one. So then we had a, a fabulous little segment. Lethal and Creed show up, and they're all dressed in suits, and they're strutting. And Lethal, doing a Ric Flair impersonation, by the way, early on, talked about how Jared had just given them a big bonus, telling them they were the future of the tag team division, and they were overjoyed. So... These young guys get paid so little that they have to be given a bonus from one of the main eventers in order to afford suits. Right. They cannot buy them on their own with their full-time salary. Of course not. But the bonus provided by one week of Kurt Angle's pay and then split three ways was enough to treat themselves to a brand new suit. Yep. Because they're scum. <laughs> they're peons. They're geeks. They're geeks. Kiyoshi and Alex Shelley. Um, Kiyoshi came down to the ring with Yujiro and Tetsuya Naido, who they referred to as No Limit. Yeah, they never named these men. No. They said, look, Kiyoshi is here with No Limit, and there were two Japanese men there. I thought perhaps it was No, and then his partner, Limit. You know, it's bad enough when a show doesn't have graphics. <laughs> they not only didn't have graphics, but they didn't even identify each man by name. No, they just... Uh, they, uh, was... They've never appeared on the show before. It wasn't even... No Limit, a tag team from Japan. Well, yeah, it was, because they, they, they talked about they, how they did show, okay, they the did Machine show. Guns had wrestled. No Limit. They didn't mention that. All and right. Global Impact 2 was coming, they said. So anyway, these guys had a fun little match. I have no problem with that. And Shelly won. And then right. the lights went out. Suicide hit the ring on his zip line, which is so lame. The zip line has got to go. He ran wild on both guys. They played his music really loud. It's kind of hard to tell, but judging from the fans in the first few rows, nobody cared about Suicide's run in here, and uh, he beat them up. It's funny. I actually wrote down, I wrote in the finish, so they won with the frog splash, and then I wrote, no complaints. And then the lights went out and Suicide's music started, and I thought, oh, God, here we go. And he came out, and he did his deal, and it's it's fine for what it is, but what it is is so stupid you can't get into it. And then Don West, slipping into heel and answer mode, pointed out, hey, Suicide only ever attacks from behind. Why doesn't he ever challenge the champion to a match or try to earn a title shot. And I thought, he's exactly right. <laughs> he's telling the truth, and he's supposed to be the heel. Well, I was just wondering, how is he attacking men from behind when he's sliding down on a zip line with the music out, his name appearing in the, uh, on, the on a giant screen. And a spotlight on him. <laughs> spotlight on <laughs> the him. The only light in the building is on him. How is this attacking men from behind? He's a bad ninja. Jesus. At least he didn't run into a ladder this week like yes. he did last week. So Angle then was meeting with the Mafia, just backstage, just hanging out, and Booker told him that Jared had given his weekly check to the front line, and they all went out and bought new suits. And Angle said, well, if they use my money, these are my suits. I'm going to go take care of the problem. All right. Somewhere in here, Booker, the Mafia was not thrilled that Kurt was there. They thought he was going to cause more trouble for everyone. They advised him to leave, or as Booker T said, lickety split. <laughs> But he went to go get his suits back. So, then the blonde interviewed Beer Money about how they had sent two TNA wrestlers packing in the last two weeks. Times are tough, she said. There's a recession going on. And they said they were well aware of that, and they hyped up a match with LAX later and promised that one of them would be on the unemployment line after tonight. We had more stupid one-night no DB videos, including Cody Deaner, who is, in fact, an indie wrestler, playing the role of Cody Deaner in one of the videos. So, yes, that is going to be the new boyfriend of ODB, and they, they fired Petey Williams to bring him in. Actually, he's been in for a while. Well, there's also a video here from Shark Boy, apparently trying to win the night with ODB. I would like to think, on his own volition, he went home and made this video and sent it in. Yeah. Because that, that, it, it, it makes too much sense in every way. So remember how earlier they said that uh, Jared had given them these this money because they were the the hottest young tag team in TNA or the the future of the, the future of the company the future of the company. Well, Kurt Angle showed up and beat the holy living shit out of Consequences Creed. Just made him look like a jobber. He was. He is. Yes. And security showed up to break it up, and Kurt basically said, 
This is my suit. And so they backed off. Right. Duh, it's his suit. He was suspended without pay. He showed up and started beating men up. Security went to stop it, and he said, this is my suit, so they backed off. My question to you, Brian, is which of this do you find most stupid? The, the just blatant logical and, the, and Kurt openly defying his fine and his suspension without pay and getting away with it, or the fact that the guy who was the future of the company was just beaten like a child here? I'll tell you what I thought was the stupidest. The next match. Uh, one quick thing to note here. Before that, somewhere in here, there was a segment where Booker T was on the phone. He said someone would be there soon, and he threatened tough love, and then he started talking about Black Snow, which I guess was his name when he was the main event mafia commentator. A dumb segment that, in hindsight, went nowhere. Beautiful People against Raisha Saeed and Awesome Kong, against Rocka Khan and Sojourner Bolt, against Taylor Wilde and Roxy, four corners match, with Madison Rain coming out to watch. Nine women were in here. They went Ten. one minute. Eight, eight wrestlers, the governor, and Madison. Oh, I forgot about the governor. Yeah. Uh, they went one minute. They went to commercial. They came back, and Taylor made the hot tag. And then it broke down into an eight-way. Somebody thought it was a good idea to do an eight-way breakdown in the middle of a woman's tag match with Rocka Khan and Sojourner Bolt involved. It was an epic clusterfuck. Rocka not only got completely lost, but she got so lost that Roxy punched her right in the face, full bore. She went down hard. Watch this, everybody. Go back and get a uh, tape of this and watch it. I'm at, it, it may be Rocka's fault, I'm not sure, because it's Roxy, Velvet, and Rocka involved, and I don't trust either any of these women to wrestle, really. But Roxy and Rocka went to brawl, and Velvet was on her hands and knees in the way. And so she eventually got kicked, and then Rocka got punched in the face really hard and went down, and then Ro- Rocky, uh, Rocky, Roxy turned around. All these are names in this match. Roxy kept hitting people with these lame clotheslines and punches, and when she wasn't really hitting them hard, it was horrible. So it was completely hideous in the ring, and then suddenly the ref was distracted by Kip, the 11th individual in this match, and as the referee's distracted, the governor hits the ring and lays out Angelina. Fine. <laughs> the, the governor hit the ring and laid out Angelina behind the referee's back. There's your finish. But no! In fact, the governor hit the ring, she laid out Angelina, Roxy goes to pick up Angelina, but then... The other girl, Madison, comes off the top with a drop kick, hits Roxy, and then Angelina, who'd been hit by the governor, makes the cover and gets the pin. Because it was important the beautiful people get a win here. I don't know. This, <laughs> this enraged me. Have... This whole match enraged me. So it, it was a clusterfuck. It was overbooked. Overbooked. It was it bad. Was pointless. It was made. Ironically, no impact whatsoever other than feelings of hate. Well, Madison is now part of the beautiful people. I, I guess. As a result of this clusterfuck. I suppose. Uh, my, there, there's actually two things that I hated about this you did not note. The governor came in. The governor, as far as I know, is not a wrestler. As far as I can tell, she's a woman that Roxy and Taylor hired to play a joke in the beautiful people for months and months and months. And now she's sticking around to make fun of them more. So she comes in here. She hits a big wacky move, some neck breaker suplex thing. And Don West immediately knew the name of this move. <laughs> she has a finisher. She's not wrestled yet, but she has a finisher all ready to go. Of course. So then Madison came in. You recall last week, Madison turned heel. When in a tag match with Taylor Wilde, she, for no reason, turned on her and slapped her in the face in their first time ever teaming. So she comes out here to continue her feud with Taylor by kicking Roxy. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. That was that. And then uh, what else do we have? Um, Jarrett was angry at Kurt Angle for killing Consequences Creed. He threatened the repercussions. Well, that's right. He guaranteed there would be repercussions. Yeah, I'll bet, I wrote. Then we had Booker T and Scott Steiner coming out, and Booker did this promo talking about everything was fine with him and AJ. He wasn't going to press charges. All he wanted was AJ to come out and bring his belt back. He said, don't worry about Scott. He's just hanging out. This isn't an ambush. So when AJ didn't come out, Booker said, listen, fucker, bring my belt out. So then AJ came out from behind. And actually, before he came out, Don said, 
AJ had done some dumb things lately, but he'd be a total idiot to come out here. Don West, the heel commentator. So AJ then runs in from behind, runs in the ring through the crowd, tries to jump them from behind, but they catch him, stop a mud hole in him, and as he's being beaten on, he slides out of the ring, grabs the belt, and starts to bail. So AJ's backing up the ramp with the belt, laughing at the heels, and suddenly what does he run into but masked security guards? No, no. They were police. Police, sorry, police. I know. These are red police in large letters across their chest. Flak jackets, helmets, and uh, police on their uniforms. You can't even call this flak jackets. They were dressed for space combat. Yeah. They were dressed like... Seriously, their helmets were shaped like stormtroopers. So they proceed to arrest AJ Styles. Now, as they're arresting AJ Styles, one of them gets in the ring with the heels takes off his mask, and it's Samoa Joe. Right. Let's pause here for a moment. <laughs> Before we move on, let's establish what has just happened. Cops arrested AJ, and one of them got in the ring and unmasked as Samoa Joe. How did he get this outfit? He apparently, without the cops' knowledge, took out their fourth member who thankfully was his fat size, put on the uniform without them noticing, and followed them around all day. So. Because. <laughs> I am trying to figure out how this fucking works. When this started, I actually thought all four guys would take off their masks, and it would be like no. Joe and Freedy and someone else, Mitt Ryan or something. No, no. The other three guys were cops. Yeah, because later they put AJ in a police we car and took him to jail. With flashing lights and the whole deal. So, yes, Joe managed to, to, to uh, what's the word, um, not sabotage, he managed to s s imitate a police officer to the other police officers without them noticing that one of them had gone missing. Or that a new guy had just randomly shown up. So, after that happened, after he unmasked, and the cops, first off, if I recall correctly, the cops were still on the ramp when the man impersonating them unmasked. Yeah, they, they were not 20 feet away. They were more concerned that a guy had stolen a wrestling title belt on a wrestling show than that a guy had impersonated an officer. Gets better. And apparently beaten up an officer to get the outfit. So then Samoa Joe, in his cop outfit, pulls out a sword, a serrated blade. He proceeds to put it at the throat of Scott Steiner. He threatens to decapitate Scott Steiner on national television. In the middle of the ring. In the he middle was going of the ring. to slice his head off. He stuck the blade in Steiner's mouth to fish hook him. They send down security. <laughs> well, what about the cops? They send down security and they go to the break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Five security geeks hit the ring. Now, I ask what about the cops, and the answer is, I don't know. The cops apparently did not care about the fact that someone had imitated them, taken their place, and then threatened to decapitate another man 20 feet in front of them. They had a redneck to take to jail. So they were taking AJ away. They did not get involved. So we were left for like five seconds with this of the scene. Scott Steiner is sitting on the mat. He is helpless as a mad Samoan is holding a blade to his throat. Meanwhile, there's five security guys, like, in a chorus line, facing them, all of whom are kind of, uh, they have a, a, a low posture, and they're just holding their hands out, basically doing jazz hands, just standing there. This is supposed to solve the problem. I guess it did. To my knowledge, Steiner's head is still on his body. I did not hear about a, about a, a, a head being lobbed off in the middle of the ring, but this is their security's answer. Yeah. To, to all strike the same pose in front of Joe and stand there. So they go to commercial, and they come back, and when they get back, there's a debate about what we've just seen between <laughs> Mike Sunday and Don West. The debate actually began right before the commercial. As all this is going on, Mike Sunday described the action. He describes Samoa Joe pulling out a sword and threatening to kill Scott Steiner in front of all of us, and he said, you know, I can't blame him. He can't blame Joe for murdering this man with a sword. He thought this was fair. He thought this was a reasonable thing to do. And Don West, once again, the heel announcer, pointed out this is bullshit. Yes, Don, or Tanae, Tanae, 
Today said, I've actually got some of this written down here. Today says, or first Don says, he stole a belt worth $200,000. Oh, yes, that was it. funny enough. Well, yeah, but, yeah. And has been sneak attacking him at every opportunity. Today then says, you get your revenge in the ring. And Don says, are you fucking kidding me? And today says, and I quote, it's the only thing that makes sense. Yes, if he, speaking of making sense, after commercial, they showed AJ being arrested, and this uh, Paul today, which is well, the second debate. So, to review, Don West pointed out that attacking someone with a sword is bad, stealing things is bad, and attacking a few people from behind is bad. He is right about all of this. Mike Tanay defended attacking someone with a sword. He defended theft. Yes. And he said the only thing that makes sense is to challenge someone to a wrestling match. Yeah. When you have a personal disagreement. Yeah. As this is happening, Don finally just can take no more and walks off the set. By the way, he will be a massive baby face. He will be a massive baby face. So he walks off the set, and uh, as this is happening, Kurt comes out on the ramp and starts beating up Lethal. <laughs> Just completely, <laughs> utterly destroys him. When you say as this is happening, the Don is leaving was, the booth. Don had left the booth. The can was focused on Mike Tanay, who I forget if he was speaking or just staring there, giving the Mike Tanay stare. But regardless, we see over his shoulder two bodies come out of the tunnel, and one of them is Kurt beating up Jay Lethal. Yeah. So there you go, and uh, he, he destroyed him. And when he said he was taking back his suit, he removed Jay Lethal's jacket. Yeah. And left with it. So then, uh, then JB was interviewing Jarrett backstage, and he said he'd finally seen enough. He wished it hadn't come to this, but after Angle had, had disobeyed him so many times this evening, he was finally going to solve this problem once and for all by beating him up. Right. Well, you do solve everything in the ring. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. So, but then, of course not yet. First we had Abyss and Dr. Stevie. And Stevie was uh, very concerned about These segments blow. his use of weapons. And Abyss said no more weapons. He was cured. And as he was speaking, they cut away. <laughs> they just cut away mid Which is fine. That's fine with me. You see, what, what I hated, I don't know if hated, this whole promo was Abyss talking about Tom and Jerry. And he said he could never figure out why they would fight for the whole cartoon and then be friends at the end. And he actually said this, for years and years, I racked my brain. Wow. Yeah. What a simpleton. So there you go. And then uh, Dr. Yeah, we had the Dr. TV thing. And then after that, we had uh, Matt Morgan against uh, Sewell, Shane Sewell. Why? I have no idea. So during this match, we had another great TNA moment. Just this, awesome. This could only have happened in this company. Of course. Today says, we have just heard that Jim Cornette has taken the Legends title back from Booker T. Cornette, he said... Wanted to make the proper decision, and had taken the belt back for TNA management. The Legends title. The Legends title. The Legends title that Booker T introduced because he had it in a briefcase. He paid for it himself. Correct. He awarded it to himself. Right. They have already forgotten their own storyline. Yes. He's taking it back, and my thought was, taking it back? You never had it before. It's always been Booker's. So that made no sense. And then I thought about it a little more. Well, yeah, think about this. Let's pretend, let's pretend Booker T bought himself a belt, awarded it to himself, and TNA said, okay, fine, that's an official belt. We will recognize that belt. For a second here, let's go with that thought. If that's true, AJ Styles still stole it. It still belongs to Booker. He was never pinned for it. Well, more so, more so. Booker T, think about this. Booker T pressed charges... Because AJ Styles stole his property. That's the entire storyline. That is true. This wasn't TNA's belt that he stole. No. He stole Booker T's belt. Right. So Booker T had him arrested for stealing his personal property. Correct. And then TNA management claimed it? And, and they're apparently not going to jail. This show, I don't even know how, gets dumber every single week. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Someday, years from now, archaeologists are going to study the show. No, they won't. The, the no, demise they won't. of Western civilization no. began right here. No, so then we had um, 
that match, as I, I noted, Sewell and Matt Morgan, it was a it was a it was a long squash. A long squash, which was, begs the question: If you're going to squash Shane Sewell, why not do it fast? I guess because they needed so much time to tell us about Jim Cornette's proper decision. Why why couldn't they have put given more time to the opener, for example, Kiyoshi's match? The X title match, you would think, yes, that seems important. They had about a ten minute squash here. It was for what it was, it was fine, but it did not need to go as long as it was. And then Morgan basically cut a promo and challenged Abyss to a ten thousand thumbtack match at the pay per view. It was a good promo. So Lauren interviewed Eric Young, also in a suit. Which he noted he bought to the Salvation Army. Oh yeah, yeah. Geek. That, that was a good one. So, of course, Angle flew in and beat him up as well. So now three guys treated like complete jobbers on the show. Actually, here I must disagree with you. He flew in. They had a brawl. They were separated. Eric was still raring to go. And here are these two guys. They're facing off. They're, they've clenched their teeth. They've got their fists all balled up. And Mike Tanay says, there has to be a showdown between Angle and Jarrett. What? Yeah. Eric's right there. He can fight. Well, I was just wondering why Jarrett couldn't find Angle in the tiny impact zone for the last 15 minutes. I don't know. Where are you looking? I don't know. Under the ring? Beer Money and LAX, where if the losers lost, the guy who dropped the fall had to leave the company. It um, it ended up with uh, DQ after a chair shot. Uh, Hernandez was going for a border toss. Rude hit him with a uh, chair. And then Team 3D came out and, and uh, took up the challenge for the pay-per-view. So it's uh, Beer Money versus, or, sorry, yeah, Beer Money versus uh, Team 3D, where if Team 3D loses, the loser of the fall has to uh, leave the company forever. Like, that's going to happen. So either they're going to do a fake retirement or Team 3D wins the belts, and who really cares? Who cares? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't. Actually, the best part of this, or was a great part of this, you, 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 I know you were laughing about this, but it's actually dumber. Team 3D is talking about how you guys are um, poor human beings, actually, ironically. They said that, um, you know, these guys these guys do this for a living. They feed their families here. You have, you have driven them out. You have ruined their lives with this challenge. And I thought, how? <laughs> no one was forced to do this. No, they all... It's called a challenge for a reason. <laughs> yes. They, they challenged them. They offered to do this. They accepted the challenge. They went in voluntarily, knowing what was at stake. Exactly. Why is this? Why is this their fault? It's not. No. And then Angle came down and and challenged Jarrett for the fight, and then he kicked Sting's ass at the pay per view. So of course Jarrett came out. They had a long brawl, and long story short, Jarrett threw him out of the building and slammed the door. To which Mike Tanay screamed, "Think of how symbolic this is. How symbolic is it?" He threw him out the back door. Is he gone forever now? The final segment of the show, and how ironic, actually, also, that today on the Figure Four Daily, Lance and I were arguing about whether last week was the worst impact of all time, and his argument was they did a good job building up Sting versus Angle. Well, they threw that out the window here, didn't they? Goodwill undone. <laughs> goodwill undone. They spent the last ten minutes of the show building up Angle versus Jarrett? Not even do, building up Angle versus Jarrett. They spent the last ten minutes of the show building up Jarrett. <laughs> Jarrett was king. He had humbled this man, disposed of him in front of all the world to see, sent him packing. If his woman was there, I'm sure he would have taken her too. And then some fat guys came out, specifically Team 3D and McFoley. They all had a party. Yeah. That was the end of the show. This was supposed to be symbolic. A big win. <laughs> this was a big win by the front line. They threw a guy out the back door. A guy who is not wrestling on the next show beat up a guy who was in the main event of the next show. Stupid. So anyway, everybody, this show, guess what? Where's my no-buys drop? <laughs> Damn it. Way to go, Ace. I don't know where it is. To the back! TNA. I actually hated this show even before it began. And it's not just because I'm prejudic prejudicing against TNA. It's because I saw the uh, preview for this on Comcast. And here's what it read. Kurt Angle returns from his one-week suspension. <laughs> now, if you missed the show last week and you missed our review of the show, Kurt Angle was all over the show, including working the main event angle. So, way to go, suspension, guys. The next part of the preview reads, The Destination Next card is revealed. Destination Next is in three days. Yeah. <laughs> they revealed the card tonight. Angle came down to open the show, and today said that Don West inexplicably had not shown up at the building yet. So Angle demanded Jarrett come down to the ring, and he said his suspension was officially over. Really? Again, it never began. No. Oh. He was never out of the building at all. He was in the building the entire show. He said Jarrett tossing him out of the building was trying to get over in front of his butt buddies. This is what he said. 
He wanted to know if Jared had any balls or if he was just a chicken shit. Jared came out with a guitar and then Foley and BG came out and tried to talk Jared out of going to the ring. So BJ said, listen, Jared, you go back to the hotel and Foley will take care of this. So Jared left. Foley went to the ring. Wanted to know what the hell was wrong with Kurt. They got into a big argument about various things. And uh, Angle ended up... um, Let's see what happened. Foley dared Foley, Kurt to hit him. Foley said, listen, I can reason with the mafia. I was trying to reason with the mafia, but they're as bad as you are, Kurt. And the only person I can talk to is Sting. So, Swerve's coming, everybody. And uh, it's great because TNA's attempts to become unpredictable are so fucking predictable. Every single time. <laughs> we can get to this for When's the, the last show, time but... we were really swerved by TNA? I can't even remember a time ever. You always see everything coming, because you always know that everything is a swerve. Had I not read the spoilers or heard the news, I would I would have been surprised with Don West turning heel on my tonight. <laughs> if you want to call that a swerve, though, that was just an angle. I'm talking a swerve. Ah, or, or we thought one thing was coming and then something else came along. Never. Hmm. Yeah, it's been a long, long time. Yeah, they since... always promise something, and we know what they're going to swerve us with. Right. Way to go, unpredictability there. So... Anyway, he demanded uh, he demanded Kurt give him his best shot so that he could have the opportunity to go Cactus Jack on Kurt's ass. And then Angle backed down. And I thought, who is Kurt facing at the pay-per-view? <laughs> Foley? Jarrett? They built both of those up bigger right. than so with Sting. Right. Who is his actual opponent? Correct. Mind-boggling. <laughs> no, not really. Par for the course. Bar for the course, yes. Uh, Mick Foley came out wearing a corduroy jacket, and when he got in the ring, if you've ever heard the full drop of Terry Funk explaining exactly what his satchel ass is, never has there been a bigger satchel ass than Mick Foley right now. Well, he was right. His ass is much wider than his shoulders, and therefore, according to Terry Funk, he cannot be trusted. Irony. Then we had Cornette meeting with Sting, and he said he needed a favor. He said that Sting and Angle had been brawling all over the place last week, and so other wrestlers weren't getting a chance to be in the spotlight. What? They were brawling for 120 minutes? Apparently. I don't recall. So anyway, he said, since you're you're taking the spotlight away from these young guys, what I'm going to do tonight is I want you to pick a man, Sting. Kurt will pick a man. And the two men will wrestle in the main event. And you guys can be at ringside together. And even Sting thought this was retarded. He was like, let me get this straight. Angle and I, uh, we're going to be at ringside together. And Cornette said yes. So Sting was like, all right. And he left. And then Borash was like, wait a second. You don't want these guys to fight, yet they're in the main event together. And Cornette said, yes. You see, I am, I am, I am the man who has created chaos. It's good for business. Exact words. Good for business. I laughed. I don't know how. But, uh, yes, it was... Business. <laughs> they will get more money. Do they do anything that's good for business? <laughs> they will get more money because Stan and Kurt Angle are at ringside, yes. I just like the fact that Cornet is upset that there are not enough young guys on his show. Why don't you just book some young guys on your show? I don't know. Aren't you in charge? Lauren interviewed Jenna, who... I had heard about this chick on Survivor. Like, she took all her clothes off to uh, to win some sort of challenge or something. I heard another girl did. And then, I don't know if they made out or what, but they both ended up on the cover of Playboy. And I'm reading about this, and I thought it was something that happened, like, last year or something like that. Instead, unless I misheard Lauren, she said, You won Survivor in 2003. That's pretty old. They're <laughs> firing people. <laughs> They're firing people. And as Dave noted, this woman is getting more money than Gail Kim wanted to stay. Really? A woman who won Survivor six years ago. Is she, is that I should just end this review right now. <laughs> they that? lost Gail Kim because they wouldn't pay what she wanted. And they paid more money to a woman who won Survivor in 2003. Does her Survivor win predate TNA itself? No, it's 2002. Oh, I see, okay. It's close. Then Matt Morgan walked up, 
and wanted to know if Abyss was going to accept the 10,000 Thumbtack Challenge. And Lauren said she'd answer for Abyss. The answer was no. He no longer needed to mutilate his body for the living. No longer needed to mutilate his body for a living. I, I just want to know why not. What else is he going to do? Morgan said the answer would be yes because he got whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. And he grabbed her in the ass and did not let go. And she finally slapped him and ran off. I just saw rape. Basically, yeah. And uh, and he snickered about it because, you know, she's a girl. I don't know. That's what TNA says. All I know is that tiny little Lauren looked up a great, big, strong, terrifying Matt Morgan and gave him the worst slap I've ever seen. It was horrible. Rhino and Sheik Bashir, in the middle of this match, Don showed up. To save the show. Wearing the most ridiculous outfit I've ever seen. So, this angle, by the way, for those of you that, that are new, that have not been watching TNA, and maybe are new and to this show. on you, by the way. Let me, let me explain how this angle started. This angle started when TNA management allegedly had a meeting because they were unhappy with Don's performance. And Mike Tanay allegedly did not stick up for Don, so Don turned heel. Now, given the premise that TNA management is unhappy with Don West's performance, he has now walked off the set two weeks in a row and now has showed up late. Yeah. And he's still employed. He showed up late and, according to Mike Tanay, reeking of booze. So Every he, single yeah. angle that they do <laughs> makes no sense. It's actually it's baffling now. I mean, how is this even possible? You don't even have a single angle that makes sense. He was so, Every angle you do is idiotic. He was so desperate to keep his job that he showed up late reeking of booze, tried to pass the buck and blame others for his failures, and then acted as if it was no big deal. Never once did he show remorse for showing up late and costing himself his job or, or putting his job at risk. Then, Don pulled a Vinny. After showing up late, he nonchalantly, as if he could care less, said, What did I miss? And Tanay said, Well, in the main event tonight, Sting is going to pick a man, and Kurt is going to pick a man, and the two men are going to wrestle, and Foley and Sting, or an Angle and Sting, are going to be at ringside. And... So then Don, upon hearing this, said, So let me get this straight. Angle and Sting are getting partners and we're going to have a tag match? And today said, No, they're not getting partners. They're acting as managers. And there was a long pause. And then Don said, That doesn't sound as interesting. We're not joking. This is not a parody of TNA. Peaked. They have peaked. <laughs> <laughs> this seriously happened. He their, buried their own main event. <laughs> their own announcer buried the main event and wished for something else. <laughs> wished for something better. <laughs> for something cooler. Yeah. This. I, I, I don't know. I laughed. I laughed hard. Let's recreate this one more time. All right. You play Mike Tanay. Sure. Even though you're normally Don West. Mike, what did I miss? Well, the main event tonight, Sting is going to choose a man. Kurt Angle is going to choose a man. Those two men are going to wrestle with Sting and Kurt Angle at ringside. So hold on a second. You're telling me that Sting and Kurt Angle are going to get partners and have a tag match? No, no, no. Sting and Kurt Angle are going to choose men. Those two men are going to wrestle. Sting and Kurt Angle aren't wrestling. They're just at ringside. Well, that doesn't sound as interesting. Needed a longer pause. <laughs> I'm sure they did every line of that better, but most notably, the, the pause was like four seconds of gold. Rhino pinned Bashir. I have no idea what happened it here. It doesn't matter. And then there was Bashir hitting him with a chair and putting a flag over him. All I know, I was still just befuddled, completely befuddled by what I had just seen on TNA. Don West burying the main event because it could be better. <laughs> and, and, and he immediately thought of a more interesting and exciting match. They are so stupid. They are so stupid. They think that Don West is supposed to be a heel for saying that. Instead, yeah. he's like a hero. <laughs> and the, the company looks fucking stupid. That, that, that's Don West's heel gimmick is that he points out how much the company sucks. Why didn't he just say, this show sounds like it's going to suck? I can leave right then, yes. The beautiful people were in the throne room with Madison Rain. They are calling it their new sorority. My Pie Sexy. Like a sorority, you know? 
Haha. Retarded. And then they threatened to basically interfere in any match any one of them was involved in. Angelina specifically mentioned that she was very concerned about Tracy Brooks sticking her nose where it didn't belong. I haven't seen Tracy Brooks in the show in seemingly months. She was there tonight. She was there tonight, but she hasn't been before. The Mafia was backstage, and Angle was looking for a partner, and they all said no. They all had stuff. They were too busy. And so he sent their fat security guys to go find somebody. We had Cornette meeting with Booker. He had the Legends title. He wouldn't give it back. He said, listen, we can't have the cops on the premises all the time, and we can't have the wrestlers arrested. It's bad for business. So he said, listen, I'll give you the belt back, but you have to sign a document saying you will not press charges on AJ. Booker's like, fine. So he signs the papers, gets his belt back. Cornette said, I also have a, a, a uh, contract for you and AJ on Sunday at the pay-per-view. And Booker said, I don't sign nothing without my lawyer. And Cornette said, well, I understand AJ's younger and faster and would probably beat you. So, of course, Booker goes, give me the contract, and he signed it. So, yes, three days build. Angle versus uh, Booker is announced. AJ versus Booker. Who cares? I know who cares, yes. I, I just like the idea that Booker's property was stolen. I guess it sort of makes sense, but he was willing to not press charges as long as he got his property back. Yeah. Which I guess that, I, I can see someone reacting that way, but, yeah, dumb. Next up. We had Eric, Eric Young, Young yes. meeting with Sting and said he really wanted to be the wrestler tonight. And Sting said, I really respect you, Eric, but tonight is not the night. And so Eric tried to cut a serious promo about how he was the future. He wanted the spot. The same spot that Ric Flair gave Sting when he was a snot-nosed punk. What? For those of you who don't know your history, Ric Flair once made Sting famous by carrying him to a great match in a 45-minute draw. Because it's fake, you see. Yes. It's fake, so, everybody. That's so, the message here. Wrestling's fake. If Eric was using Ric Flair to Sting as an analogy, what Eric was asking was, Sting, please have a great 45-minute draw with me, which he did not do. But somehow he ended up being chosen as Sting's wrestler. Joe did a promo saying he'd be back in three days and would be reborn. Who's even wrestling? Who knows? I, I, they, they said Steiner. Oh. They, when they ran on the show, it's Joe and Steiner again. Oh, wow. Well, there's a match I really need to pay for. So then we had Lethal Consequences doing a promo. Apparently there's another match tonight with people choosing mystery partners. Why, I don't know. That's the because every theme match, for the, P, the week. It, well, that's the theme for the week, but a, every match has to have a stipulation. They can never have a man versus a man or a team versus a team. There has to be something wacky and confusing going on all the time. He also, uh, Consequences Creed in this promo said, I'm not making this up, he says, Scott Steiner looks like Rick Astley. Perhaps I've not been watching the Rick Roll videos closely enough, but I don't know. I've never seen that connection. Then uh, LAX came in; they were the mystery partners, and Hernandez hit us with what was apparently his new catchphrase. And I am not making this up. He actually said, "Welcome to the Donkey Show." I don't want to know anymore. I do not want to know <laughs> anymore. Let's just move on then. Oh my God! Angle tried to recruit Kiyoshi, but he doesn't speak. Je uh, he doesn't speak English. So uh, Kurt couldn't understand him and kicked him in the gut and threw him out. This was apparently supposed to be funny. It was actually just a complete and utter total burial of Kiyoshi. I mean, total burial. You ever know? Well, yeah. The, the, <laughs> Angle buries everybody, as we'll see as, as, the, as the night goes on. Then we got Team 3D and Abyss against Matt Morgan and Beer Money. Now, I know that Team 3D and Beer Money are wrestling at the pay-per-view. They're doing their retirement stip. Or if Team 3D loses, the loser of the fall has to retire. Now, I would like to note, I didn't mention this last week, and Lance got very mad at me that uh -oh. I didn't mention this, but last week on the show, uh, they had a, a, uh, a match with LAX and uh, Beer Money with the loser of the fall if LAX lost retiring, and they ended up going to a DQ finish, so nobody retired. And then immediately after that match, they announced this tag team match at the pay-per-view with the same stips. So basically, they killed the stipulation just prior to announcing the fucking stipulation. Right. Incredible. So then we had this match here, and as noted, Beer Money, Team 3D, Abyss and Matt Morgan. And as noted, since they can never just have a team against a team, it was elimination rules. I didn't even know this, because Devon got pinned a minute in, and I thought, <laughs> what the fuck? And then they also had been eliminated. 
So after being pinned a minute in, Storm got eliminated for spitting beer in Bubba's face. And then Bubba pinned Rude with a full Nelson ass buster seconds later. And then Morgan pinned Bubba with a choke slam seconds later. Yes. This whole thing went like a minute and a half. Yes, they, they slotted an elimination match with five pinfalls, five decisions, and did not give it any more time than your typical lightning quick TNA six man. This was such a fantastic example of how to completely kill interest in a match at the pay-per-view. How can you possibly want to see Beer Money and uh, well, Team 3D after this? A bunch of goofs who all got pinned in seconds. So then Morgan and Abyss had a brawl, and Morgan beat him up and uh, threatened to uh, toss him into the tax, but uh, the girl came out and uh, made the save, and... Um, well, she came out. Well, she and just, came out, and, and and Morgan threatened to choke slam her onto the tax, and then Abyss made the save. Well, yeah, she she actually distracted Abyss, leading to him getting pinned. Yeah, which led to Don West saying, "Hi, I'm Abyss. I'm pissed." And uh, yes, yeah, and Morgan was going th- holding her over the tax, and Abyss saved her. And who cares? She. I, I also noted that when uh, he he let her go, he had her like a, uh, by the neck for like a choke slam, and then Abyss saved her and he let her go. She almost fell in the tax anyway. Oh yeah, that would have been not great, but. Appropriate. That would have been horrible. Yeah. Tanae and West got in an argument, and Tanae said, why don't you pull a Don West and leave? So Don said, you want me gone? Fine, I'll be at the hotel bar. And he left. <laughs> Third Tanae, week in a row. Tanae gave the mad face. Tanae gave the mad face. Don West, before he left, was trying to blame Lauren for what had just happened to her with uh, almost being choked slammed in the thumbtacks. Not blame her. He said... I, I, I realize people say a lot of things about blondes, but is there anything dumber than for a tiny woman to run into the ring and get in between a giant man and some tacks? Which is correct! Well, it is dumb. But before that, he said, is there anything dumber than a blonde woman? Then he said, you know their motto these days, I am woman, hear me roar. That apparently is the women's lip motto here in 2009. Yes. Don was so hilariously bad that I was very <laughs> sad to see him go. I was so sad to see him go. So then Abyss went ape shit backstage and said Sunday he was going to avenge himself and his girlfriend by making Morgan his bitch. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but this was as close to a money promo as we got on this entire show. Oh, absolutely. By Abyss. Well, absolutely. <laughs> he, he threatened extreme violence. He noted it was this Sunday. And you have to tune in to see it. So, yes, well done, Abyss. Foley replaced Don West. Madison Rain against Taylor Wilde. All the girls were there. And Tracy is now a referee, I guess. She was refereeing this match for God knows what reason. Inexplicably. She just showed up as a ref one day. They, they needed to get more people on the show. So what was the finish? Well, Madison, who just joined a new heel group, got pinned. Because you see, she was in sunset flip position. She got in an argument with uh, Tracy Tracy shoved her, and she fell into the sunset flip, and Tracy counted the pin. You're you're giving this too much credit. <laughs> Taylor went for the sunset flip. Madison grabs Tracy. Tracy throws Madison's arms off. They do this again. Madison grabs Tracy. Tracy throws her arms off. A third time, Madison grabs Tracy. Tracy finally shoves her down and counts the pin. This sunset flip, Taylor Wilde could not pull this woman down for like 30 seconds. Yeah. Horrible. And then she finally got shoved down and pinned. Yes, this was all incredibly, incredibly stupid. I would also like to add that uh, the beautiful people have removed their ass entrance. No buys. I don't know why. I don't know why. And then Cute Kip cleared the ring with perfume. Yeah. I don't even know what this was setting up. What was it setting up? I think they're doing a six-girl tag on the pay-per-view. Oh. This show. This is the go-home show. (laughs) I still have no idea what the card is for Sunday. So then we had ODB hyping up her deal, which also ends up on Sunday. We have to pay to see the payoff for this one. I would light myself a fire before spending the night with ODB. Then Booker and Nash came out to yell at Foley. I have no idea why. They were just yelling at him. Security pulled Booker away. And, uh, by the way, I've never seen a show that had so much security while simultaneously having absolutely no control over anything. (laughs) Of course. None. So... As they're pulling him off, security, I guess, I don't know what security was doing, but they didn't see a giant 300-pound jacked-up dude with a pipe run up and whack Foley from behind. Well, to be fair to security, the cameras and director did not see this either. Yeah, they (laughs) missed it. (laughs) All we heard was a thump, and then they cut back, and Foley was down. Foley was gone. They missed (laughs) Steiner hitting him with the pipe. Way to go, TNA. 
So I don't know if Foley put fake blood on his head or if he actually gigged the back of his head. I wouldn't normally ask that question, but it's Foley here, so God knows. And then after commercial, they showed clips of the EMTs trying to get Foley into the ambulance, but he refused, saying there was somewhere else he needed to be. And then BG jumped on the phone to call Jarrett. We had Lethal and Crean in LAX versus Steiner, Booker, and the Machine Gun. So, yes, only in name, the Machine Guns teamed with the Main Event Mafia. So, they had a pretty fun little match, but it is literally impossible to care. It is impossible to care. It is so impossible to care. The finish was Hernandez pinning Saban with the border toss. I believe LAX are the only people in this match who are not on the pay-per-view, and they won. I guess so. <laughs> Saban, Creed, the Machine Guns are in the uh, Ultimate X. Booker T's facing AJ. Steiner's facing Joe. LAX, day off. Wow. But, but they won here. Well, way to go. Stupid company. They had to get a win somewhere. So then, Morash interviewed Foley backstage, and he was ranting and raving about how he couldn't be in the hospital and ringside at the same time. And he said he was going to be at ringside tonight. Did I miss an entire segment somewhere? About where he, why he would be at ringside? Why would he be at ringside? I don't know. They said Sting and Angle were going to choose men and be at ringside with them. Right. Where does Foley fit into this? Don't know. It gets better. I was actually more baffled in the same segment by Road Dog, who the news that, that Foley was staying around and would go to ringside had Road Dog morose. Yeah. He was like in mourning about this. He was grieving. So then Angle tries to recruit Brutus Magnus, who turns him down. He turned why? him down. He was upset that Angle had beaten up Jarrett. Was Brutus Magnus not a heel the last time I checked? I could have sworn he was. I just like that Brutus Magnus turned Angle down as they're both standing directly under the shadow of the boom mic. Well, that, that too, yeah. Rinky dink. So Angle was about to give up. He had no one to, to be his friend tonight. When all of a sudden he looked at the fattest security guard named Rocco, one of Phi Delta Slam, for those of you wondering, and uh, asked if he wanted to wrestle tonight, and Rocco nodded. This was like school play level hideous acting. <laughs> so it was on. Rocco versus Eric Young in the main event of the Go Home Show for Impact. Rocco with Kurt Angle against Eric Young with Sting. Let me say Eric Young with Sting. Keep in mind, Cornette said the young guys wanted a chance to shine. Eric Young came out with Sting to Sting's music. Of course. They of course. came out and had this match. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, All I gotta, right. I gotta cut you off there. Fine. First off, Rocco's fat friend is named Sal. For those of you keeping track, the security guy. Now, we just saw an interview with Foley where he's ranting and raving about how he can't be at the hospital and at ringside at the same time. And I was sitting there thinking, since when is Foley going to be at ringside? But he was insisting he would be there for the main event. So, not for a single moment in the main event was Foley actually at ringside. That's true. Yes. Not for a single moment of this match was he actually at ringside. It was awesome. Yes. So they did the match, and uh, as I noted, Young came out as Sting's shadow. He was just Sting's lackey. They had the match. It was the fat guy beating up Eric the entire time, and it was fine for what it was until finally the... Well, stop for a second here. I realize security's got to be tough, but a security guy in apparently his first wrestling match ever mm -hmm. was beating the shit out of the trained professional wrestler. That's right. Because they got to make a star. All right. So he, so here's Eric Young's star turn. He came out of Sting's lackey. He got beat up by the fat guy. I thought you were talking about Rocco getting the star treatment. No. Oh. I meant Eric Young. Got beat up by the fat guy. Fat guy missed a splash. Eric Young hit what they called a DVD. It was really more like a Samoa drop. He got the pin. Kurt Angle, they played Sting's music again. Yeah. And Kurt Angle hit Eric Young in the back. We never saw him again. Yeah. Way to go, TNA. <laughs> Way to you go. You made him look great, man. So. You made it sure... Uh, you made it abundantly clear where you're not supposed to care about this geek. Sting attacked Angle, and then security joined in, and then Foley waddled down to make the save, and there was a lot of weight in the ring at this point. <laughs> God bless Foley. But I was I was concerned that there was going to be some breakage here between Foley and Rocco and the rest of these guys. They said Rocco weighed 400 pounds. He looked the same size as Foley. Uh, I don't know about that. Rocco looked like Bubba Ray after an eating binge, if that's possible. <laughs> He was bigger, fatter, and a little more uh, square. So then Nash was in, and then Jarrett finally made the save, and he hit security with chair shots. He was about to hit Nash and Steiner, but Sting stopped him. And then Jarrett, after clearing the ring and being Superman, said this Sunday it's Angle versus Sting in a match where he would be the special referee and Foley would be the special enforcer. That was how they built up Sunday. <laughs> 
fail. Oh, God, an epic fail. Yes, and, and, and really, if you're really listening, you actually hear him say, I will be the special, special referee, Mick Foley will be the special enforcer, and he will screw Sting and turn heel. Basically, yes. Yeah. Or, or well, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if Foley's turning heel or if, if Sting is turning heel again or, or what's going to happen here. But uh, if you care enough to pay 30 bucks, I don't know what to tell you. I bet you anything Crumbly's not buying the show. It's impossible. <laughs> when even Crumbly is not buying a show, you know there's trouble. And it's because, um, yeah, this was this was not good stuff. To the back! Vinny and I are going to run down the TNA pay-per-view, and God, do I not want to talk about this show. It was very bad. I have no desire to talk about this show. This show was horrible. This show was horrible. A horrible, horrible show. When a show was so bad that Dave Meltzer refers to it as a fucking awful there was one match on here. What did he say? It was the Sojourner Bolt Awesome Kong Quiet match. Quiet down. I'm going to read it here. I'm going to read these are Dave's exact words. This will tell you everything you need to know about this pay-per-view. The Sojourner Bolt match. Where is it here? Sojourner Bolt versus uh, whatever her name is. Awesome Kong. Awesome Kong. I've, I've totally given up. That's clear. <laughs> when was this match? It couldn't have possibly been this far out onto the show. It was... Uh... Awesome Kong versus Sojo Bolt for the knockouts title is next. Kong won with a power bomb in a short, fucking awful match. What more can you say? That was his show in a nutshell. Fucking awful. There was a there was a uh, what do you call it? The Ultimate X match. That was a very good match on pay per view. It's about it. That is about it. And in fact, I was looking at the thread on the board. We've got a board, of course. I don't even know why I go on there sometimes. To escape the pay-per-view. But on the board, we've got a, a thread here about the pay-per-view. It is 47 pages long. <laughs> this pay-per-view started about four hours ago. 47 pages. People just largely hate this show. And then, of course, we had one of our uh, one of our board members here. I'm sure some of you have heard about him on the show. Crumbly, our biggest TNA fan, had uh, the balls to give Sojourner Bolt and Awesome Kong two stars. To which I could not even with I could not even retain my restrain myself in any way. Fuck off! I wrote. Fuck off! I mean, there's there's you can be a fan of something that's fine. You can be a fan. You can defend it in certain ways. But when you go out there and you try to tell me that Sojourner Bolt and Awesome Kong was two stars, just fuck off. Two stars is supposed to be average, right? Average. Yeah. When what what about this match was average? Nothing. I mean, this is, like, just beyond ridiculous. That was a zero-star match with a one-star finish. I hate TNA, and I can tell you that the Ultimate X match was great. Because that's that's what happens. That's what happens when you try to be impartial. I, I realize that most of this pay-per-view sucked, but I can come out here and say that Ultimate X was a great match. I gave it three and three-quarter stars. Maybe even four. It may have been a four-star match. I can say that. I try to keep my credibility. To come on here and try and tell me that Sojo Bull and Awesome Kong was two stars, all I can say is fuck off. This is not even, this is not even, you don't get, you don't get the right here to tell me that everybody has a right to their opinion. Because that is just wrong in this case. That is a wrong opinion. That is, there's not even, you can't even tell me, that doesn't even cl be classified as an opinion. That's a lie. <laughs> it's an outright lie. Yes, if you consider the Awesome Kong versus Sojourner Bolt to be average, then... You're lying. There is, or there's something just wrong with you. Perhaps you're blind. Let me talk about this pay-per-view. What an awful pay-per-view. Let me look at the star ratings I've given this show. Half star. Star. Ha star and a half. Minus star. Minus star. Three stars. Two and three quarter. Three and three quarter. And uh, I guess... I don't even know what to give the main event. The more I think about it, the lower the star rating goes. I mean, I'll get into this. Undercard of this show. I don't know if there's ever been a worse undercard. No, the first hour and a half was a strong contender for worst hour and a half in the history of pay-per-view. The Beautiful People, Roxy, the Governor, and Taylor Wilde. They had a match. This was basically an impact match without the commercial. Yes. They did a bunch of moves, and then Taylor pinned Madison Rain. Now, why you debut Madison Rain, turn her heel, and put her with the beautiful people, only to beat her immediately on pay-per-view, is is a question best left to the great minds in wrestling. Perhaps because you can explain why this is a good idea. My mind is 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 not great enough to comprehend the the uh, this this finish here. Half a star. As a match, it was fine. The finish was perplexing. There was no cue, Kip, nor no explanation of where he would be. No, I she wasn't there. We had a bunch of backstage things, including an interview with Jared and Foley. 
But, of course, there were major issues with the sound. Yes. The sound was too loud, and then it would switch over and be too quiet, and then it would switch over and be too loud, and I had no idea what was going on right here. And in the middle of this interview segment with Foley and Jarrett, the words, Brutus Magnus, suddenly appeared on the screen. Because apparently was he was wrestling next. He was wrestling next, and they somehow pushed the wrong button in the middle of this. And his name appeared on the screen. This show is run by monkeys. The most rinky-dink stuff you've ever seen. I don't even know what happened during this promo. They were talking about the main event, and Jarrett was going to be, um, call it down the middle. I just wrote goofball Jarrett Foley segment, and that's all I remember about it, except for the technical problems. Bruce Magnus came out and issued an open challenge. This was a this was a bonus match, a bonus, an extra value for your money. I suppose yes. They're supposed to, they're trying to advertise it by letting you know this is not what you paid for. Bruce Magnus and Eric Young. I'm sure Bruce Magnus is a nice guy. In a way, I feel sorry for the guy because if you're going to be a wrestling organization and you're going to try and create a new star, it helps to have him go to wrestling school for at least some period of time or have a developmental territory where he can get better. Instead, they've thrown this green guy out on television who is below the level of many of the guys in Tulalip Championship Wrestling. He went out there. He looked awful. Eric Young was trying to get a match out of him, and he kept fucking things up. And then Eric Young did everything in his power and then did the job to him. Yeah. This was ridiculous. The wrong man won this by a great degree, by a degree rarely seen before. I just started writing down stuff Magnus fucked up. Magnus drops him, then kicks him right with his toe. Then he missed a splash in which his belly was the only part of his body that did not touch the, the canvas. And it was the only thing he sold. And he said it was the only thing he sold. He could not take a backdrop. He could not take a DVD. Or, uh, sorry, he, he took the DVD, but then he kicked out of it. And he finally won with a move. A move. So I gave that a star. It was a bad wrestling match with a dumb finish. One star. I gave that a half star. You were generous. Sheik Bashir came out and was ranting and raving. I must cut you off here. Before this happened, two matches into the show, they then ran down the pay-per-view card. This, this bothers like... you too much. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Sheik Bashir came out and was it matters ranting. To me. Huh? It matters to me. Why? Because what's the point of it? At least if you tune in, UFC does not run down the card two fights in. No, I'm going to tell you why this doesn't matter. Okay. The only reason you watch these pay-per-views is because I buy them and I require you to watch them. Correct. Okay. So anybody else that buys this already knows what the card is. Why do they... Okay, okay, that's even more of a reason not to do it then. They don't need to even run it down at all. Okay, fine. If you don't do it at all, it's but something sure as hell don't do it in the middle of the show. It's just something to do to hype up the rest of the show. But I've already bought it. There's no point to This is not up. nearly as stupid as cutting a money promo on the pay-per-view. That's actually stupid. That could be done on television. It would be better served doing that on television. I would say the same thing about running down the card. They do that on television, though. Then why do it here? There is no point to doing it here. What's the upside of running down the card? Because it wastes some time that you don't have to watch Brutus Magnus in the ring. That's your excuse? Would you rather they gave more time to Sojo Bolt and Awesome Kong? I would rather the company shut down and stop doing pay-per-views. Well, they're not going to do that. (laughs) So this is what you get. This is what you get. This, however, I'm fine with that. What about Sheik Bashir coming out, and he's mad this is the third pay-per-view 2009 he's not booked on, and he's ranting and raving about this. Yes. Why do you... uh, Why? I don't know why. Why is he allowed to come out and rant and rave about not being on the pay per view? Yes, Who they, cleared this? Mike Tanay noted, hey, he's not supposed to be out here. So, yes, the Sheik Bashir, apparently, as a, as a terrorist act, overtook the pay per view. So, he just grabbed a mic and walked out of the ring and yes. they played his music? Yeah. And no one came out to stop him well, until he was halfway done? Cornette did five minutes later. So, he's ranting and raving, and then Cornette came out and said, the reason you're not on the show is because no one likes you, uh, you suck, and I'm kicking you out of the building. And then they kicked him out of the building. They had a a man named Officer Neal, who was supposedly a Navy man, even though he had a faux hawk and a tongue ring, which is is, uh, not loud, I was told, by a friend of ours, Rob, who was actually in the Navy and was watching this, and he called bullshit on this Navy man. Rob wanted this man court-martialed. He was very unhappy with this. He was was insulted, in fact. And this guy came out and and sang God Bless America with a cue card so he knew the words, and uh, they kicked him out. I paid for this segment. Yeah. Offended. This was, this was no good. It accomplished nothing unless... And it led to nothing. It led to nothing unless Officer Neal becomes the next big star. It led to nothing. Matt Morgan and Abyss, a 10,000 thumbtack match. Even per the standards of thumbtack matches, this was not much. They did some moves. They teased some thumbtacks. And then Abyss got knocked off the ramp into some tacks, and so he lost. I gave it a star and a half. I don't know. Maybe that's generous. Maybe mm-hmm. not. 
I don't know. There was really nothing to this there match. There was nothing to tell And a man fell in tax. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the epitome of the match, in, in a way, many ways, the epitome of TNA, Abyss grabbed, they had these giant trays of thumbtacks, and Abyss grabbed one and began to carry it away from the ring, and he took it back to the stage and set it on a crash pad. And the announcers, of course, not, could not say, he has put it on the crash pad. So they said, he has put it on a platform, or perhaps steps. You know, they tried to explain what this crash pad was. And then, of course, about ten minutes later, Abyss went on the crash pad. Uh, there were points where they would get, they would continuously get tax and then just pour them in the same pile in the ring and then never do anything with them. Which I guess the whole, you, you gotta tease going to the tax, so, so I guess that's good. But, if there's already tax in the ring, why would you go get more? I don't know. I don't either. One night, with ODB, actually first we had Booker and Cornette ranting about the Legends title match. Booker had signed a contract. Cornette reminded him. Booker tried to get out of it. Cornette said, no, there you go. Waste of time. There were a lot of waste of times on the show, including one night with ODB. Most of the wrestling and this segment. They said they were down to the last three finalists. I was unaware this was a tournament. <laughs> Apparently it was. So Borash called out the, uh, I was going to say woman, but whatever ODB is, called her down to the ring, and they had a man named Krusty on a drum set who just played rim shots. And then they brought out the finalists, who were Cody Diener, a redneck, Shark Boy, and Bernie Weber, who was a fat version of Lorenzo Fertitta. And she asked them all questions. They all did some dances. And uh, then she chose Cody Diener. He dry-humped her, and it was over. Uh, this was horrible. This was maybe not the most horrible thing I've ever seen, but it certainly was the most horrible thing I've ever paid for. Yes. Without question. I actually did write down this is the worst thing I ever saw. I may actually call the cable company and try and get my money back for this show. I may actually try this. Really? That it was so bad that I want my money back. And it was long. It was very long. It was a a combination of the dating game and who wants to be a millionaire. And uh, it was no good. It was... Not entertaining, it was not funny, and the joke just refused to die. It kept going on and on and on. So, yes, a giant thumbs down for One Night with ODB. The worst thing I ever saw. You're doing that right now, aren't you? I'm actually going to go to Comcast right now. I'm going to send a message asking if I can get my money back. I am that offended by this pay-per-view that I am literally going to do that on the air. The blonde interviewed Beer Money, and, of course, they called her stupid and a bitch. What a shocker. Hate Women hating in TNA. It must be done in every single segment. Let's see, hold on, i got to sign in here. Oh, as we're doing this, I'll get this done. I think this is more entertaining listening to you uh, communicate with Comcast. That's that's trouble enough as it is. I can't even sign in on their website. Great. But I'm going to here. Anyway, Awesome Kong and Sojourner Bolt, they said this was the first of five title bouts. Like, this was supposed to make us feel like we got our money's worth. So... Bot spots galore. I don't even know what to say. Including a springboard spot that got screwed up so badly that Kong decided she wasn't going to sell it. And then she killed Sojo with a lariat in retaliation, and the crowd cheered Awesome Kong. Yes, that's that really is all you need to know. And, uh, yes, I, uh, she did find the finish was so uh, Bolt tried a diving r- Rana, and Awesome Kong caught her and hit a big giant power bomb. That was cool. Thus, I gave this one star all for that one spot. One star? Fuck you. You're as bad as, as the other idiot. It was zero up this to that point. This was minus one star. It was a horrible match. Kong worked this match like she just gave up trying. Just gave up trying. And uh, they they did some spots. She missed a splash. Raisha tried to interfere. Kong got sent outside, which led to... Nothing. She got right back in the ring. Right. The match kept going. She finally powerbombed her for a pin. Minus one star. This match offended me. Of all the women in TNA, this was the match that we ended up seeing, and uh, it was horrendous. So, uh, minus one star. Anyone who says otherwise is a liar. Where's my, uh, where is the fucking thing? Ask Comcast. How can I help you today? Ask a question. Refund. You want help with your bill? Sort of. None of the items on the list are my problem. I am sorry, but I don't know what to suggest. (laughs) (laughs) Story of the day, isn't it? These assholes. Where is the customers? Help contact us. There we go. 
I like how in our customers there's also one that says, Explanation of Bill. Many times I've asked that question. Email us. Here we go. Um, I want digital cable. Oh, enter your zip. Digital cable. That match was so bad, everybody. You don't even know. It was atrocious. Alvarez. I'm going to have to do all this as we go on. They're asking too many things right here. I just want to send them an email, and they're making it very difficult for me. Well, they, they don't want to hear what you have to say. They're Comcast. Well, you talk about the next match. I'm going to do this. Oh, well, they aired a Samoa Joe video. He tried to explain... Oh, no, I want to talk about this. <laughs> I thought you might. They tried to expl- Joe tried to explain what the Nation of Violence is all about. I concede I have no idea what he was talking about. There are lots of flashes on the screen. He was talked about whose fault it was that he was no good anymore. And the only key part here is they showed lots of clips of Joe being awesome in the past. That is important. Then we had the match. Scott Samoa Steiner Joe versus Samoa Joe. And Scott Steiner, who've had good matches in the past. So Joe came out, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I will never say that people should get on steroids. Especially. But it always seems that when guys are out for any length of time, they come back and they're bigger than ever. They look great. They look awesome. Now, granted, a lot of those guys do do steroids. But when you're, when you're off... Television, who do we talk to? Armando Estrada, we were talking about this. I, I mentioned, you know, it's kind of strange that you, you debuted in ECW as a wrestler, you had a brand new body, you had six-pack abs, to which you replied, eight, and uh, <laughs> and you, you, you were looking great in a drug test environment, and they fired you. And, you know, I, I was like, how did you achieve this physique? And he, he said, well, you know, I was, a, I was a general manager. I never wrestled. I never had to go to TV except for the day that they taped ECW. I was home all the time working out and eating right. Amazing. Now, now when you are at home, not being sent anywhere, and eating right, you can get in shape. You don't even have to take drugs. You just work out and you watch what you eat. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Samoa Joe was doing during his off time, but it involved eating. (laughs) There's plenty of eating involved. He was gigantic. I mean, clinically obese. He returned, fat, pale. Yes, he actually got whiter. Tattooed. This match went one minute, I would say, before he just hit the ref for the disqualification. The fans were irate. They chanted, bullshit. The guys brawled outside, and then it was over. There were more chants of bullshit. There were loud boos. Minus one star. And that is actually being generous. Don West even said, I'm not making this quote up, I feel bad for the crowd. Yeah. Don West felt sympathy for the crowd and the paying audience at home who did not get the match they had paid to see. Yeah. Really? That, <laughs> they're openly acknowledging they baited and switched everyone. They fucked everybody is what they did. They fucked us all in the ass. They did. This show. You have any luck there on the uh, I'm, get, I'm getting to the city now. Hold on. AJ Styles got a promo. He had not much to say except that he said he was not in it for the money or the houses or the cars. He's in it for the love, so we know he's a giant mark for the business. And, we had, and they make no money. And they make no money because he's not a star like Booker T and Kurt Angle and those guys. And we had AJ Styles versus Booker T, which is now for the uh, fake Legends title. They had a good match. I like this match a lot. Not as much probably as Ultimate X, but it All was... Right, let me let me let me actually. I'm going to. But I want to stop you here so I can, uh, I can you make sure the, the entire world can can hear what I'm doing right now. Uh, this is a a. I guess it would be a general. It would be billing. I would suspect. Dear Comcast, I ordered today's TNA pay per view. It was bad to the point that I became. Gravely offended. Would it be possible to be refunded the full purchase price? Sincerely, Brian Alvarez. Doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt to ask, you know what I mean? And you're very polite. Dear Comcast, I ordered today's TNA pay-per-view. It was so bad. I don't like that sentence, though. It, oh, it was bad to the point that I became gravely offended. That's okay. <laughs> sure. Why are you asking to give me for approval? <laughs> You're an editor. I see. Would it be possible to be refunded the full purchase price? Sincerely, Brian Alvarez. Yes, bad to the point I felt gravely offended is fine. That will be a credit inquiry. Submit. Da! 
done. All right, we'll get an update in a day or two. We will we will update you when I get a, a response from Comcast to my request to be refunded in full for this bad pay-per-view. All right, go on. So they, uh, they had a, a fun little match. They did a long spot where Booker T grabbed a wrist lock. And AJ had to fight out of it, and this and this took like a minute, maybe more, and it was all just good, good old school wrestling, and especially the part where Don said it's important to have feeling in your arms. <laughs> it's so important to have feeling in your arms. He noted, Thanks, and Don. really, who can argue that? So they were wrestling along, and you, it was one of those matches where you keep waiting for the babyface to make his big comeback, and then instead he just grabs the heel, hits his finisher, and wins. Yep. AJ grabbed Booker T. He. Uh, who was a big man and AJ is small, but he somehow managed to hit the Styles Clash, and then he rolled him over and got three. Now, the match I liked a lot, probably three in the three-star range, somewhere around there. AJ grabbed the Legends belt, went into the crowd for the big party. Don West is talking about what an important win this is. He won a fake, fake belt. Yes. In the world of fake wrestling, this belt is still fake. Moreover, this guy in particular, this is not like Eric Young, who's never had a title. AJ's been a three-time champion of this promotion. He's held every belt. Yes. Now but he's Mike celebrating. Mike Tanae said this was a huge step forward. He's a huge step forward winning this bobble. This this belt that, that Booker T had created for himself. Yes. So that was dumb, but everything else they did was fine, so I cannot complain about this. Then they cut backstage, and there was Joe, who was covered in blood and dirt. I don't know why he was covered in dirt. There's no explanation for the dirt. He was clutching his sword, and this time his sword had blood on it. And he told Lauren, who was who wanted to know where Steiner was, Joe said, I want you to tell the rest of the mafia that Joe is going to kill them too. Two. Two. As in, he killed Scott Steiner. <laughs> Scott Steiner was murdered. The, his Scott Steiner's Wikipedia, by the way, was immediately updated with the details of his death at the hands of Samoa Joe. And, uh, and Samoa Joe, in that Wikipedia, was described as looking like Umaga after he ate Shawn Michaels. I said Jabba after he eat Umaga. We had beer money in Team 3D for the tag titles. Uh, I gave this three and three quarter, and that's only because I have respect for beer money as workers. But this was actually also in the negative star range as far as offending me. I paid for this match, and obviously I knew that Team 3D, neither of them was leaving forever. But what they did was they had this perfectly fine little match, and then Storm hit the ring with a chair and whacked the baby faces for the disqualification. Now, of course, you pay to see a resolution, and they gave us a disqualification. So I began laughing at how fucking stupid this promotion was. So as I'm laughing, out comes Jim Cornyn, and he says, You know what? This is the TNA pay-per-view. Beer money, this was your idea. We are going to have a finish tonight. I demand this match restarts. It is now a no-disqualification match. So the match restarted, and I thought, My God, they did it right. No sooner should I speak than Team 3D hits Robert Roode with the, uh, or Storm with the 3D. And as the ref goes to count, Roode pulls Storm out of the ring. He puts him on his shoulders. He runs to the back, grabbing the titles on the way from Don West. Runs backstage. Cornette runs impotently after them, shaking his little pieces of paper. And that's the end. They were counted out. They were counted out. Yes. They restarted a match after disqualification only to count them out. Right. Immediately, by the way. On pay-per-view. On pay-per-view. And again, this is the second second time in three matches they did something like this. And again, Don West noted, how disappointing. This just gets dumber. Just raped their fans again. Dumber. Again, yeah. Straight out of WCW. There was a point here. That, I paid 30 bucks for this. I want my money back. I'm, I, I'm not kidding here. Yes. The, uh, the, the, there was a point where Bubba Ray hit his ass buster power bomb thing, and he made the cover, and, uh, Root kicked out, and Don West asked, how many people kick out of that move? Everyone. All of them. Everyone. And no one has ever been pinned to that move, that move ever. But I thought actually the most important part of this was the commentary at the very beginning. When the bell rings, they start to wrestle, and Don West says, well, Mike, you can't tell me Samoa Joe hasn't gone too far now. Mike Nay, bless his heart, then proceeded to blame Scott Steiner for being murdered. <laughs> he said he should have been prepared for Joe's nation of violence. He should have known what was going to happen. Joe warned him. <laughs> Joe warned him, he said. Joe warned him he was going to kill him. And I, I don't remind you, Mike Tanay is supposed to be the baby face. Yeah. The side of right. Yeah. Fuck this company. 
Ultimate X, Jay Lethal, Motor City Machine Guns, Consequences, Creed, and Suicide. This was a, uh, I gave it three and three quarter. I, it, it didn't hit four stars for me. It was pretty damn great. It was, it was hard to care after the rest of the show was so awful. Yes. But everybody worked really damn hard. The best part was actually the fans chanting, uh, Fallen Angel at Suicide, so it's fooled nobody. And in fact, Suicide has to unmask as Chris Daniels. In fact, if this were WWE, I'd, I'd say this was coming for sure. But it's TNA, and they're idiots. So so what they did is probably just because they're morons. But the finish of the match was all four guys, or at least Creed, Machine Guns, and Lethal, were all hanging from the cables in the middle of the ring, fighting for the belt. And Daniels, or Suicide, goes up to the top of the X. He leaps into the middle of the ring, or into the middle of the cables, lands flat in the middle of the X. All four guys fall down. He grabs the belt and wins. And uh, if you recall correctly, uh, Christopher Daniels, as Christopher Daniels, did this exact same move for this exact same finish in this exact same match to win this exact same title a couple of years back. So they pretty much told the world it's the same guy, but I would guess that they're actually probably so damn stupid that it won't even be uh, it won't even become part of the storyline. No, other than that, it was a bunch of really cool moves in a row. It was largely the Motor City Machine Gun Show, and I am fine with that. Uh, <laughs> the the other cool spot was uh, Suicide. They were building up to the big dive spot with a bunch of guys on the floor, and Suicide grabbed Consequences Creed in the apron, and then he did a rolling senton onto the pile of men. That was insane. There were many other insane spots, including the, the finish. I thought it was dumb. Okay. He was on the apron, right? and he did a, roll, a fireman's carry roll on the four men outside. On the three men outside. <laughs> on the three men outside. How spectacular was this? He could have jumped off the top of the cable on the five men outside. He could have done a flip off the post, but instead he did a forward roll off the apron. With a guy on his shoulders. Still. <laughs> I thought it was cool. Fine. So, yes, and then and, and the uh, the big finish at the end with uh, Suicide hitting his giant dive, which was very, very scary, and he pulled it off and sent everyone scattering to the wind like bowling pins. That was awesome. You know I hated it? Because the setup took so long, number one. Fair. And number two, it was like one of those spots where, you know if you do a moonsault off the post on the five guys, everybody's going to cheer. Mm-hmm. They're just gonna. Mm-hmm. Instead, it was like they thought, what if we did Finley's fireman carry roll off the apron on the three guys? And the other guys were like, yeah, let's give it a shot. And so they did it. It really didn't look all that good. Creed nearly died. Creed nearly died. I did, I did say it was insane. That's my exact word. I didn't necessarily say it, was, say it was the greatest thing I ever saw. I may do that move with you at Tulalip. I don't think you... I, bet, I guarantee you you will not, in fact. Well, I'll put you on my shoulders and I'll tip over on the three men outside. And everyone will cheer. Great. Well, they won't cheer. They'll be like, what the fuck was that? Do a flip. He did a flip here. Anyway, this was the best match in the show. I actually also gave it three and three quarters, so there you go. Then we had the final match, Angle and Sting, with Jared as the referee, Foley as the guest enforcer. Of course, Jared's been a referee since he was like 14. He was so an awesome ref. He was awesome. Foley, unfortunately, is now old, and he is larger than Samoa Joe, which is really saying something. At least he got the shirt on. Completely immobile, and they had an average match. Uh, Kurt Angle works very fast. Sting is 49. He couldn't keep up. Mm-hmm. There was even a part where Angle needed to do a German, and Sting was taking too long, and Angle screams, Come on! There were a couple times when their timing was just totally off. Well, that's and what happens when one guy's going faster than the other guy. The, 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 Kurt was, uh, he, Sting was running at Kurt. Kurt went to hit the, the, you know, the overhead belly-to-belly, and instead they just plotted into each other and fell down here in this main event championship match. So then, of course, we had the ref bump, as we always do. Kurt Angle clotheslined Jarrett. And he clotheslined him, and Jared was down for about 10 minutes right. off this clothesline. So that's when we had all the usual bullshit. We had Sting putting Kurt in the scorpion. Kurt tapped. No referee. Mick Foley was right there, though. And uh, Angle gave Sting the slam and demanded Foley count. And even though Foley didn't okay the tap out, he was willing to count for uh, Kurt Angle. Of course, Sting kicked out. And this came off so low rent because they do the same bullshit in every TNA main event, except this time nobody cared. There was no heat at all. Angle kicked Foley in the nuts. 
went for a chair. Foley got the chair. Foley tried to hit Angle. I have no idea why, but he hit Sting. Jarrett finally got up to his feet. Angle covered Sting. Jarrett went to count. Sting kicked out. Angle gave Foley a slam, which was a tremendous feat of strength, (laughs) a legitimate feat of strength. This is more impressive than when he squatted 600 pounds. I have never seen a man go up as heavy as as Mick Foley did here. He did not even try to go up for poor Kurt Angle. So then Angle spit on Jarrett. Jarrett punched Angle. Sting hit the death drop on Angle. Jarrett counted the pin. Overbooked tripe. Yeah, there's... Two very good reasons why none of this actually got any heat from the crowd. One is, they've, of course, they've seen it 800 times before. Two, this is all booked with three men trying to screw over one, and that one was supposed to be the heel. People were supposed to boo Kurt Angle as he fought off three men at once, and eventually he was overwhelmed. <laughs> Seriously. He was punched by one guy, fell into the other guy's finisher, and then got and then got pinned. He got screwed. This show sucks. Everybody, you know what? Everybody, everybody go to your cable provider and politely ask if you can please get a refund for the money that you spent on this pay-per-view. Why don't we all send a message? Yes. Uh, Why don't we all send a message? I, I, I keep paying for these, and I get offended by them. God, this show sucked. To the back! All right, the main event mafia came out, and long story short, it took them 20 Jesus minutes, Christ. 20 minutes to sign Sting... And Kurt against Angle and Jarrett. There was a lot of talking. There was a lot of jibba jabba. And finally, they agreed to this match, and it took 20 minutes. Yeah, I, there's I, my review. I wrote a half page notes about this. I'm looking back. It was full of nothing. You may as well read them. What else are you, you doing? I'll, I'll read my notes verbatim. Do it. MEM out. Angle references Montreal. This is not in my notes, but Montreal was 12 years ago. Then he told Sting, you can't work a worker. He said Sting had 10 seconds to surrender his belt. Sting said he was loyal. <laughs> and I asked, why is this feud still going on? Because I watched a match Sunday where they fought in the main event of a pay-per-view for the world championship, but then one guy won. That usually ends a feud. So uh, Nash interrupted. He said Sting didn't owe Kurt anything, but he owed the rest of them something. He was jealous that Sting was hanging out with Mick Foley at the end of pay-per-views. So, yes, this feud has now become a feud between 13-year-old girls who are jealous when the, their friends hang out with other friends or other girls. So, yes, they're all just bitching amongst each other, and we're supposed to care. Let's see. Next, uh, Angle wanted Angle and Sting versus Jarrett and Foley. This brought out Jarrett. He said Kurt was not the booker. Angle says Jarrett's refusing to book the match so he can protect Sting. Oh, meanwhile, this has to be mentioned. Scott Steiner was there. Scott Steiner, who on the pay-per-view was killed. You remember, uh, Samoa Joe killed him with a knife. So, <laughs> Scott Steiner's there, and h- how does he look, you ask? We don't know. He was wearing a sweatshirt with the like the hood sewn shut and a skull sewn to the front of it. And there was no... He was mutilated, you see. <laughs> he was scarred. They mentioned it, you missed it. They, they, uh, uh, the announcers may have mentioned it. Yeah. Kurt Angle did not mention this. No. Scott Steiner did not mention this. No. He came out, he was covered... No one seemed to care that he had been killed and brought back to life. And then he left this at the end of the segment. He was never seen again. So here's Jarrett and Kurt bitching at each other about will this tag match take place or not. Meanwhile, there's Scott Steiner and his death mask behind them. Everyone's just oblivious to it. It was so patently ridiculous. <laughs> so yes, at some point here, Foley came out. He said Sting did not have the authority to book matches. Mick Foley said he had been at ringside a lot, and he said, I can stand and watch as well as anyone. And people applauded this line, because they're dumb. So Foley said he wanted to wrestle. I have no idea why. Jarrett said Foley didn't want the match. Kurt said Jarrett didn't want to watch the match. They are just psychoanalyzing each other, I wrote. Kurt tells Jarrett to man up. Jarrett accepted. At that point, I wrote down, so, now it's Kurt Jarrett. And then they've been talking about the tag match again. And Mike Tanae called it a dream match. And I can honestly say... Not once have I ever ever had a dream about Jeff Jarrett and Sting versus, uh, yeah, Jeff Jarrett and Mick Foley versus Kurt Angle and Sting. No dreams. Well, some people have had that dream, I'm sure. So I was was fine with this. It was just too long. I I didn't even care all that much. I didn't get mad at it. It was just too long. Then Shelly and Saban against the Team of No Limit. Yes, that is how they were introduced (laughs) by the ring announcer. The Team of No Limit. Nor do they bother to prepare graphics. Tanay at least referred to them as Ujiro and Naido, so uh, he didn't even get Tetsuya Naido. He didn't even get a first name. This would be like New Japan referring to the guns as Alex and Saban, yes. which for all I know they might. So they had, as noted, about the best tag match you can have in four minutes, and this may have been the most fun I've had watching Impact in years, and 
Anyway, the uh, the uh, team No Limit, the team of No Limit, won with a uh, Naito reverse to Frankensteiner and uh, did a cradle. And it was a non-title match to build up a title match. They just inexplicably announced them as the IWGP Junior Champions. Yeah, the Machine Guns, they, they did not have a belt on Sunday. They walked out here with the belts. Apparently, in the interim, they flew to Japan, won the belts, and flew back. Sure. Now, I will say, they were promoting using this match to promote a match between these two on Global Impact. And in four minutes of watching this, I decided there is no way I'm going to miss Global Impact. Because this is awesome. And if they wrestle for 12 minutes, it will be super fucking awesome. And I want to see that. So then when it was over, Beer Money hit the ring and beat up the team of No Limit, which went from the best thing I've seen on Impact in months to the stupidest thing I've seen since last week. And they beat him up to let us know that these men were not important at all. Yes, do not care about these guys. And then Rude came out, or called out Team 3D, who came out with the IWGP tag belts, which they kept referring to as the New Japan Tag Team Championships. So anyway, long story short, Rude put him over and then said that they wanted a match... They wanted a match with Team 3D for the TNA titles at the uh, the cage match at the pay-per-view. Now, this is the heels offering to put their titles on the line against the babyfaces because they want to see who's better, which does not sound like a heel move to me. But anyway, they did. And then Bubba said, we'll, we'll up the ante. We'll put our, IW, or our New Japan Tag Team titles on the line as well. So it's a title versus title match. Now, it sucks to be TNA because they actually came up with this idea first, but WWE put it on television first two days earlier, so this looked like the cheapest ripoff possible. So these people just cannot catch a break. I had not thought of that, but it is true. Um, yeah, the match was awesome, and frankly, the promo was awesome. Both only two guys spoke really. Devon said, "Oh, my brother, testify." But uh, awesome match, awesome promo. Really, really, really stupid bit in the middle where the the hot new team of No Limit was made to look like complete geeks. Jarrett met with Foley and was screaming at him about backing him into a corner in the opening segment. They didn't want to be a wrestler, that sort of thing. And anyway, Foley cut this promo about how, you know, we started this business because we loved it. Let's go out there and have fun tonight. Let's go out there as former world champions and face two other world champions and have the best match in Impact history, which, by the way, they did not have. But anyway, Jarrett was moved. <laughs> sure. Uh, when I asked in the, the uh, opening segment, I could not figure out why Mick Foley wanted to wrestle this match so badly. Because it is fun, was the answer. I guess that's as good a reason as anything. We had Raisha Saeed and Awesome Kong against ODB and Taylor Wilde. Cody Diener was in the crowd. So they got heat on ODB, and then it broke down into a four-way, in which o e ODB was inexplicably carrying her flask. I have no idea why. It led to nothing. It led to nothing. It was never seen again. She just had her flask during the comeback. So Taylor pinned Kong with a cradle. Why? I have no idea. Anywhere else this would be to set up a title match in a cage, but I don't have any faith in TNA at all. So I don't know why they did this, but they did. And then afterwards, Kong beat the hell out of uh, ODB until Cody Diener hit the ring out of the crowd to make the save for his woman. He made fisticuffs while simultaneously looking as terrified as a redneck can look. He is awesome. He's so cool. He's the best character on this entire program. <laughs> yes, he, with Curry Man gone, he's the top guy. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he has his mullet, he has his mustache, he has his personality, that's all you need in life. We had Angle and Borash backstage where I think Borash just read the script for the pay-per-view match, ran down all of the run-ins and swerves and shit like that, and basically the question was, do you still believe you had nothing to do with losing on Sunday? And Angle said, of course not. It was three on one. And he's right. I don't know. what. I, I agree with him. I have no idea what the point of this was. All I know is I lost that, interest about halfway through. All I know is Borash noted to Kurt, you kicked Foley in the balls. And Kurt's response was, right in the balls. Really hard. <laughs> we had Joe and Bashir, which went ten seconds. Joe jumped him at the bell, beat him up by the ropes. The ref gave him a standing five count. Then he started yelling at him, at which point Mike today said the ref was, quote, attempting to disqualify Joe. Yes. Apparently, disqualifying someone in TNA is complicated. <laughs> it's a strenuous task. I thought you just signaled to the timekeeper to ring the bell. Yeah. Apparently, it is much more difficult than that. He was attempting to disqualify him. So Joe stared him down and stared him down and finally hit him with a giant uppercut. The ref took a great bump, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but yes, he was punched while attempting to disqualify Joe. Joe then grabbed the sheik in a crossface chicken wing and dragged him to the back. Yeah. Lauren interviewed the beautiful people in their throne room. They said Cute Kip had been put on a secret probation, which is not a secret now, <laughs> until he could learn that not even he was above the beautiful people. This is how they're writing him off TV, by the way. 
They said Madison needed to be tested. She's not an official member yet. They said they were all hotter than God. And they said they didn't care who won or lost tonight. They just needed Madison to leave the, mass, the mark of the beautiful people on the governor. Her initiation into My Pie Sexy. So then Cornette came out and congratulated AJ on winning the Legends title, which I think they're now trying to claim is now officially a real belt. Yeah. Cornette said... When, when, when Booker T signed the contract to wrestle AJ and defend his belt, he was, in effect, signing a contract that handed the belt over to TNA and let them decide who contests it and who, and who holds it. That was Cornette's claim. Still worth $200,000, by the way. He still mentioned it was worth $200,000. Yes, he congratula- congratulated AJ on winning a $200,000 belt, but if something you have is worth allegedly $200,000, don't you then have to sell it to get the cash? Well, no, because... Can you cash the belt in somewhere? According to AJ, it does not represent money. He did say that. And then Booker came out and claimed the $200,000 belt was worth a quarter of a million dollars. So he's worth it, well, worse in math than I am. And then basically he said he wanted a title shot, and AJ said his first challenger would be a deserving wrestler, not a paper champion. What? How is Booker a paper champion? Because he made up his own belt that now AJ won? I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. I, that, AJ stood there talking about how this title did, he said it didn't represent money. It represent, ho, represented hope. It represented respect. And I just thought, shouldn't it respect legends? Isn't that why he legends title? Represent whatever I said. But uh, yes. Uh, Charmel said he would get his belt back in due time. That yes. was the point of this. They tried to make this belt seem like the most important thing in TNA. Madison Rain and the governor. The governor, of course, is Daphne of WCW fame. She's been around fucking forever, and she is horrendous. She was so bad. This match was like a rock a con match, almost. They botched a neckbreaker. There was double-teaming right in front of the ref, who, of course, turned around too early because none of the refs in TNA know what they're doing. The match kept getting worse. We saw Daphne throw the worst dropkick I have ever seen in my entire life. And then she beat Madison Rain with a small package in the new biggest miscarriage of justice I have ever seen. I cannot argue with that. And then it gets better. It gets better. No, no, note that we said this was a good show. Even on a good TNA show, it is still filled with such stupid bullshit, including after they beat Madison, they then attacked the governor, they brought out heels, and they started cutting her hair off. And when I say cutting her hair off, they cut a good portion of her hair off to the point where she will need a haircut to cover this. Why did they do this? Why would you give away a haircut on free TV with no build and it's not even in a match? They've got lockdown coming up. You don't think that a tag team women's match with the loser of the fall getting shaved in a steel cage is going to add at least some buys? Maybe one person might say, I was on the fence. interest? Yeah. I would have had some interest in it with those steps if I knew they were actually going to cut someone's hair. It, Instead, it, it, for absolutely fucking lutely no reason, they just cut her hair on TV. This was baffling. Not really. Not really. That's actually it's a good TNA. point. It was still remarkably dumb. And, Complete uh, idiots. Yes, the, 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 Matt, the, the, the governor, I can't even call her the governor. It was Daphne in a suit. She used to wear glasses and smile and, and wear makeup and, and, and imitate Sarah Palin. This week, she was just out there being Daphne wearing a suit. And then she with had, her ankles taped. With her ankles taped, and and th- then she put on the worst performance I've seen in many, many, many a day. Joe had Bashir strung up backstage. You think I'm joking? But he was upside down by his feet with a rope. Don, this is what was so funny it, about this. It, it opened. Yeah, it, it and, was Mike and Don discussing the Daphne match we just seen, and then Mike today got breaking news. They're going to go backstage, and then Don West just turned to the camera. And, well, Mike Tanay said that they, they were going to go backstage because Joe had done something that he'd gotten his hands on Bashir. He'd, I don't know what he said, but whenever he said that Joe was doing something bad to Bashir, Don started shaking his head like, I can't believe this. This is so shameful. And I thought, isn't Don supposed to be a heel? And they cut backstage, and about five seconds later, I realized Joe is supposed to be a babyface. So, well, Joe is... so this does make sense, <laughs> well... except it makes no sense because Joe... Now, granted, when he beat up Scott Steiner, Scott Steiner had tried to kill him with a pipe in an alley. Fine. The whole thing's still pretty stupid, but he Scott Steiner did try to beat him up in the alley. Right. What was the great crime that uh, Bashir had committed? He'd come to America. Mm-hmm. Samoa Joe, a fucking Samoan named Joe, said, Nobody likes you here. 
go back to where you came from and tell everyone that if they get in the way of my nation of violence, the same thing is going to happen to them. He then proceeded to take a stick and beat Bashir like he was a pinata. What a fucking dick. He tortured this man. What a fucking <laughs> asshole. He tortured this man, this innocent man, for no reason. He, he threw his uniform... A smaller man. <laughs> he threw a much smaller man. A, a much smaller, helpless, innocent man. He, he taunted him with xenophobic remarks. He told him to go back where he came from and wanted him to scream, I'm from Detroit! And uh, then, then yes, he, he beat this helpless man with a stick. And uh, the sheik started to scream, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And you asked... What is he say? What is he apologizing for? And the answer, Brian, is that's what people do when they are being tortured. They apologize for things they did not do and confess the sins they did not commit. A complete cocksucker. He is an evil man, the Samoa Joe. He should have had that thing where you dip him in the water, like they used to do to the witches. Maybe that can be next week. Next week you can burn someone at the stake. Stringing someone up and beating him with a stick is not quite violent enough for my nation of violence. So they did a rough cut with Devon, which was the funniest thing I've ever seen because. First off, his forehead's disgusting. Yes. And seeing it, I'm, thank God I didn't have HD for once. But anyway, he's trying to talk about how he got into wrestling. And he's trying to do it as a shoot. And so he's talking about how, you know, I went to train with Johnny Rods, and, and apparently Bubba was there the first day that I showed up, but I don't even remember seeing him there. And he's talking about how he turns out Bubba lived right down the street from me. And all of a sudden, at one moment, he pauses and goes, I don't know how I missed him. He's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. And they, they put it on TV. It was awesome. Don't get me wrong, but it was not the kind of awesome I'd want for my product. No, awesome. They just thought, no, no one stopped to think, does this make us look good? They just thought, hey, that's funny. Yeah, it was funny. But oh, it was indisputably funny. Jared and Foley against Angle and Sting. Don's line of the week. Of course, last week he had the line about how he was asking if the main event was going to be a tag match, and Tanae said, no, they're just choosing men to represent him. And Don said, what do you say? That doesn't sound as interesting. That doesn't sound as interesting. This week, Don says, in the midst of Jarrett and Foley against Angle and Sting, quote, I can't believe you don't have to pay for a match like this. Yes. Don West has realized you should pay for a match like this, and he's telling the world how fucking dumb well, they are for putting it on free TV. I, I, well, uh, would you buy a pay-per-view with Kurt Angle and Sting versus Jeff Jarrett and Mick Foley as a main event? It's possible. Okay. What do we have for the last pay-per-view? Angle and Sting? Yeah. Why is this any less valuable? I guess I have a good answer for that one. Mick Foley wrestling, teaming with Jeff Jarrett against Angle and Sting. Mick, Mick Foley, okay, Mick Foley wrestling. Per uh, TNA pay-per-view yes. standards, that's a pay-per-view match. All right, you've, you've convinced me. It's not like this was um, this was uh, Rocco against uh, Eric Young. That would not be a pay-per-view match. That would not be a pay-per-view match. So anyway, Foley tagged in and rode and out-wrestled Kurt Angle. Right. Yes! Then they uh, then Angle gave Foley an Angle slam on the cement, and um, they it, demanded a medic. They went to commercial, and then when they got back in the ring or the back from commercial, Foley's in the ring wrestling because you see they got the heat on Foley by giving an Angle slam on concrete. Yes, what a dipshit! What a dipshit! And by the way, nothing can ever be that simple in TNA. Mick Foley. I didn't even want to get into this, but go no, ahead. No, no. The, the stupidity of this has to. The, the only way to explain this match is by listing every single item of bullshit that happened. So Mick Foley out wrestled Kurt. Then they were on the floor. The fat security guys ran out. Mick Foley fought them. Then at 3D ran out. They fought the fat security guys. And by the way, Foley against Rocco. That was Jupiter versus Saturn. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> so anyway, three, and then to make things fatter, Team 3D ran out. They fought the fat security guys away, and then Mick Foley took the I thought the impact the zone was going to tilt. <laughs> Orlando was now 10 feet deeper than it used to be. Well, no, just that part of Orlando. Just, just yeah, that, part of it's 10 feet lower, and the other's 10, 10 feet, feet higher. higher. Yes. So, so yes, and then, and then Mick Foley took the angle slam on the floor. This all happened before the commercial break. What weight? <laughs> Such <laughs> great weight. Men of massive girth, yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You throw popcorn at him and it just shoots back at you. So th- anyway, well, it goes around him and oh, no, like, like a comet. I was going to say you you throw that and it would stick to them or disappear like they were a black hole. No, it goes around him like the comets go around the sun. I see. So anyway, they, um, they had a match, and uh, I guess the key to the match was Foley's getting beaten on, and Angle goes to pin him, but then lifts him up at two, and Sting's like, just pin him already! And so anyway, they kept wrestling, blah, 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 and, and finally, the end of the match was um, Foley... 
Let's see. Jared tried to get his guitar, but Sting, Sting stopped him. And then Foley grabbed a chair, pretended like he was going to hit Angle, but hit Sting instead and pinned him. So later, they cut a promo with Sting, who was all angry, and he challenged Foley to a cage match at lockdown. All cages, by the way. And then they cut backstage to Borash asking Foley for his response, and he said he was proud of his actions. He said Angle had beat the shit out of him worse than anyone in years, but as he was being beaten, he heard out of the half of his ear Sting saying that Foley had had enough. And Foley was like, who the fuck are you, Sting, to tell me when I've had enough? So let's go back here very quickly. Many months ago, there was a gang beating outside, and uh, the main event mafia killed Team 3D. Bubba Ray took it out on Sting, who actually had not laid a hand on him. He said, the mafia was beating on me. Sting, you did not beat on me with them. You just stood by and let it happen. This made him so angry. So now, months later, Foley is getting beaten on, and instead of standing by idly, Sting actually tries to stop the beating, like Bubba had asked him to do. This has made Foley mad. So the moral of the story is Sting cannot catch a break. Sting cannot win. Sting cannot win. All I can think is that whoever writes these angles... Has no idea what they're doing? Has, well, Correct. Has, but more importantly, or more, uh, more uh, apropos for this discussion, has never been beaten up. Oh, Vince Russo? Yes. That guy's been beaten up tons of times. Really? It well, has to be. Look at him. Probably all by women. Ah, uh, there you go. That explains a lot. So anyway, uh, ended up with uh, Foley saying, I'll take the match, and there you go. Best impact in ages, but that's not saying much at all. The, 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 the Faint s- praise. All that bullshit I listed in the first half before the commercial in this match, there was four times as much bullshit after it. It was the most overbooked... Thank God this is not a pay-per-view main event because I would have been pissed off. But yes, it was a, it was a, a, a giant pile of crap. Uh, <laughs> wow! Just, no, no, that's just, all these other impacts we've seen, and this one you have to call a giant pile of crap. It was a giant pile of random, unassociated stuff. That's well, I've, I yeah. I give this show I, a I, thumbs up. I, I, I use crap in that sense, like I, I would say, there's a lot of crap on your desk right now. Per TNA standards, I give this show a thumbs up. This was Not the, two thumbs up. I give it one thumbs up per TNA standard. This is the best impact of the year. Maybe. So far. so far. That I can remember. It's the best one in many, many weeks now. To the back! All right. Impact. Because, as Vince McMahon referred to impact, reprehensible. God, I wish I would have had, like, a drop of that. The drops, the songs could be made out of Vince McMahon calling TNA reprehensible. Awesome. All right, what did it open with? We had uh, all the wrestlers on the stage, which means, like, just the geeks. Cornette ran down the card for lockdown, Sting versus Foley, and also War Games, which, of course, they cannot call War Games, but it's War Games, everybody. So, it's a new day in TNA. Everybody's going to get the same opportunity, he said. There's going to be a gauntlet match tonight. Two men were going to start. Every two minutes, another man was going to enter. If you were pinned or you submitted, you were out of there, and the final two would become the team captains. And, of course, the Mafia came out. Oh, I want to interrupt you here. A very important note. The final two would be the team captains. Yeah. That comes into play later. Now, the Mafia came out, and, and Scott Snyder, if you recall, was was cut all the pieces by Samoa Joe, apparently, at the pay-per-view. I believe that was ten days ago. Which was, yes, two weeks ago. And then a week ago, he had apparently been cut so badly by Joe the Ripper that he was covered head to toe and was wearing a mask. So now here it is a week later, and he's completely fine without a mark on him. What happened to Scott Steiner and Samoa Joe's knife? Why do I not know? Why does no one else in the show not know? Why does no one else in the show not care? What? <laughs> Why does no one care what Samoa Joe did to Scott Steiner with a knife? Because he's healed completely already. <laughs> then why was there ever concern? There never was. Well, you're right. There never was. So Angle... It's very stupid, is my point. Did a promo. Thanks, Vince. Angle did a promo, and blah, 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 blah. The point of this, the point of this, and I I am going to start collecting my money from all of you right now, was that they announced, I think this was Angle, actually, he said that the Mafia was going to position himself as a team captain tonight, and when it came down to the final two, he was going to win the match and win the advantage for his team. Which apparently means that the winner of the match, I guess that's the coin flip. Does is that this? not sound like what it means? I did I did not get that impression from this promo. That's I, what I got. I was not writing it down for word for word. 
But um, I, 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 if that was true, they didn't make it a bigger deal. He said, "I'm going. It was going to come out of the final two. I'm going to win the match and win the advantage for my team." I see. Anyway, they forgot all about that. <laughs> so there you go. Someone screwed up somewhere. Said Booker Steiner and Nash would be his three partners. Jarrett came out, called Angle a jabroni, said he was going to be one of the 20 guys in the match. And the only reason he was going to do this was to ensure that Angle would not be a team captain. And I just thought, who cares who the captain of the rival team is? In what way does it matter? In what, what difference does it make whether it were Angle, Nash, Steiner, or Booker? What difference does it make who the captain is? Don't know. Don't know. And moreover, if you don't want Kurt Angle to be the captain, it's your goddamn company. Don't book him in the match. Moreover, if you hate Kurt Angle so bad and want to get your hands on him, wouldn't you want him in the match? <laughs> don't know. All I know is that Don West, when this is over, went into heel character mode and said, Jer Jeff Jarrett is sticking his nose in other people's business where it doesn't belong. And I thought, that's true. Everything Don West says, as, everything Don West says as a heel is always true. Don West is a heel. His job is to point out that the the baby faces are wrong, stupid, however it is, cruel, and point out how dumb TNA is as well. Yes. we'll get to that in a moment. So after commercial, Borash was interviewing Angle about what had just happened, and there was a mysterious woman in the room, and Booker called her a rat. They told her and Nash to get out of the room, because apparently they are fucking. It ended up being Jenna the Survivor chick. They paid her more money than Gail Kim wanted to stay in TNA. Yeah. And they are portraying her as a rat. Right. Well, no, not only that, she was never named in this promo. She, no, she, they said Jenna. Okay, she That's was... the only reason I, I, I know. I, I take it back. She was named... If you missed last week's show or were not paying attention or just forgot who Jenna is, her significance meant nothing to you. No. It was not until the next segment Mike Tanae said, by the way, that girl you saw being debased in the prior segment, that was the girl from Survivor. Yeah. And the best part is she was on the show for about 10 seconds total. Also true. Never said a word. And on top of all that, she's not even really all that hot. No. The reason she was in Playboy, for those of you that that, uh, that uh, don't know the story... It's apparently on Survivor as one of the challenges. She took off all her clothes. That earned her a million-dollar spot in Playboy. It wasn't because she was just so smoking hot that they called her because they had to have her in the magazine. It was because she was blurred off NBC, ah. so you had to pay to see her with no clothes on. So you established that Playboy is a better business model than TNA. Well, of course. Yes. That's been known. Right. So... Anyway, that's uh, that's a waste of money. So, so yes, yeah, she has been on, uh, I believe, three episodes of the show and has contributed exactly zero cents. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We had Kyoshi and Suicide, which I thought was a fun little match. Don disagreed. Well, he said... <laughs> he, meaning Suicide, survived the match tonight as Kyoshi gave him everything he wanted. But he was a little unimpressive, as far as I'm concerned. That's a direct quote, everyone. Exact quote. Word for word. He was a little unimpressive as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, the match was very fun. Suicide, uh, at least in Orlando, maybe the biggest star in TNA. There were dozens of this guy's shirts in the crowd. They chanted his name. Literally dozens. Well, there's... <laughs> wow. Well, there's 100 people in the building. There's That's nine. A there's a, there's 1,100 people there. And, okay, <laughs> and 20% of them were wearing the shirt. Or at least all the ones on camera. I'm doing bad math. There were a lot of fucking suicide shirts, everyone. When I when I am questioning your math, yes. something's gone wrong. I, I concede that point. Uh, yeah, Kiyoshi amused me. Uh, beside, he comes off as a great Muda wannabe. If you actually watch him wrestle, he's also an Owen Hart wannabe. He broke out the top rope judo chop, and also did the uh, slingshot in where you roll over the guy's back and hit the ropes the other way. So he's watching his Owen Hart tape. So good for him. Now, there was a segment earlier where Angle grabbed this giant steel pipe and said, I'm going to go kill Jeff Jarrett. This is essentially what he said. I'm going to go bash his brains in. Apparently, this is... No one cares. No, no one gave a shit. No one cared at all. <laughs> there was no security looking for this guy. They didn't send the people that were looking for Sean Johnson stalker to stop this man. Nothing. He just went out there. And the best part was, after the, the match with Kiyoshi, they cut backstage, 
Angler's walking down the hall looking mad. He's got his pipe. There's like a photo on the wall, I guess, of Jeff Jarrett. There's some sort of poster. I didn't even look at what it was. Angel rears back. He swings the pipe. The moment the pipe hits the poster, whatever it is, commercial. And we never saw anything again. <laughs> there were four or five moments like that in the show. What was the point of this segment? I don't it know. Lasted thir- it lasted not even 30 seconds. No, it lasted, it lasted five six seconds. seconds. Yes. What was the point of this? Angle a complete waste of time. And by the way, an hour later, he still had not found Jeff Jarrett. Apparently, the impact zone is huge. Apparently. I could fucking walk the entire length of Universal Studios in a time in a half hour. He can't find the fucking guy in the building? The founder? So, anyway, then we had... It is a good show, everybody. Always keep that in mind. The blonde interviewed the beautiful people, and, of course, they yelled at her. They called her a bitch. They kicked her out. So... What they said was, last week we we took down the governor. We cut her hair. This week we're going after the mother load. We're going after the bison. Awesome Kong. So they've gone from the governor to Kong. Right. (laughs) Yes. Was it really necessary to skip nine weeks of television? (laughs) Didn't they need to work your way up no. to the giant champion? No, no. Apparently the governor was the number one contender. They've taken her out of the picture by cutting her hair. So they don't need to worry about Taylor or Roxy or any of these other people. They go straight to Awesome Kong. I just like, first of all, the, I believe it was Angelina Love simply declared, we don't sweat anything. In fact, we don't sweat. Yeah. That was awesome. And, uh, yes, they, they, they declared simply that they, they want the belt, so they're sending Madison Rain after the bison. Rough cut with Team 3D. It was actually Bubba. There's not much to say, except he insisted that he and Devon were brothers. Because for the past 13 years, they'd seen each other more than their wives, girlfriends, children. Right. I hope the wives and the girlfriends were not watching. <laughs> we get confused. But, uh, yeah, so they, he did later say they were brothers. But, again, it's, it's the wackiness of, 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 of their gimmick. But he said, uh, I was a Dudley, there was like nine of us, and then came along Devon. <laughs> So we got a sit-down interview with Team 3D and Beer Money putting over the match at the pay-per-view. And, of course, it's a cage match, as they all are. TNA and IWGP. Well, New Japan. New Japan tag team belts. Apparently they figure these people watching the show are too damn stupid and to remember. And having seen their fans, I completely agree. Well, you're probably right. Now, here's... here's we, we often talk about the poor business strategies that TNA employs. And... This is a great example of just being averse to the idea of making money. Now, granted, this probably wouldn't have sold a lot of buys, but you've got Team 3D and you've got beer money with both the TNA and the IWGP titles on the line. It's a unification match. Now, are Storm, are beer money winning this match? My guess would be with the IWGP titles on the line in a cage in Philadelphia, they're not winning this match. Your logic is sound. So if they're not winning this match, why did they get rid of the retirement stip for Team 3D? I don't know. You have the potential to add the stipulation where if Team 3D loses, the loser of the fall has to retire. You took that out <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> right. Unless beer money happens to be winning, which is possible, but logic suggests no. I realize I'm looking for logic in TNA, but for Christ's sake, this would be New Japan logic as well. So I just don't get it. For, for, for what they did, it's pretty good. Everyone cut good promos. Team 3D, much to my shock, actually cleans up nice. They were dressed very well. They looked sharp. And uh, they were going back and forth. Robert Roode asked a question. Like I, I forget what he said, but he, he asked a question, like what gives you the right to to challenge us, or who do you think has been here since day one? He asked this question. He saw speaking. Cut away to commercial. We never got to hear Team 3D's answer. Bad TV. Uh, we had Sting doing a promo, Foley doing a promo. They're going to have a confrontation later in the show. I, I will say they show the lockdown poster. It's really cool. Foley said they would not be needing, or he would not be needing his bat, this being Sting, because he was going to go out there tonight, shake Sting's hand, and apologize, because he said there was nothing that TNA fans like more than to see two men hugging. He so clearly does not care anymore. Already. Beautiful people, Raisha Saeed and Awesome Kong. Velvet looked horrendous. And I don't mean attractive horrendous. She she looks... <laughs> Her she wrestling was, skill was poor. She sucked in this match. She took the most horrible bump off a choke slam. 
And uh, I like actually, it was, I guess it was after the match, but she started throwing these kicks. Well, we'll get to that later. All right. Beautiful people and Raisha and Awesome Kong. That meant that Raisha and Kong were the baby faces here. Although the TNA I fans guess. tried I... to save it by chanting, Let's go, Velvet, which was even better because Velvet was getting the heat she as had they were chanting on, Yes. So anyway, um, Raisha made a comeback. Her own comeback. Yeah, remember, they got the heat on Raisha, she then made her own comeback. I kept thinking, your tag team partner is Awesome Kong. It's a monster. <laughs> Tag her, for fuck's sake. Her You've gimmick, got a partner. Her gimmick is that she kills everyone. So anyway, she got pinned. And then Kong got back in the ring, and they triple teamed her. Yes, this is where I got wretched. Velvet was throwing these horrendous kicks. Laughably bad. And then Madison got the scissors. They were going to cut off Kong's hair, as if. And then Kong made her own heavily edited comeback. Ran them off. And it still looked horrible, by the way. I don't know if Kong is now a babyface. <laughs> I don't know if they just don't know what they're doing. That would be my guess. But there you go. I, I will confess that when this began, I was actually intrigued just because it was a new matchup. Uh, now I'm just confused. I, I, I guess Kong's the babyface because they have nothing else for her to do but feud with the beautiful people. We had a Sting and Foley face-off where Sting claimed this whole thing was a big misunderstanding... And to prove it, he had Keith Mitchell, who, by the way, is the worst director in wrestling history, put together a video package. They showed the footage from last week. He said he'd been slammed on the cement, true, knocked pillar to post, true, and when he woke up, there was Sting with a guitar threatening to kill the founder of TNA, Jeff Jarrett. He That's said the words he, had he used. No choice but to waffle Sting and save Jeff Jarrett's life. By the way, as he was walking to the ring for this segment, he was dancing and bebopping. Yeah. Like he could not possibly care less. They, they, they did a split screen beforehand. Where Sting was walking to the ring looking like he was going to an execution, and Foley was going to the ring looking like he was going to do some drugs. Sting said this was bullshit. He said that he had tried to save Mick, Mick before because he respected him, but now he was starting to lose that respect. And then Foley cut, Foley cut a promo with great delivery. That's the good news. The bad news is he tried to tell us that this match, him and Sting, was so big, icon versus legend, that nobody was talking about that other April pay-per-view anymore, which would, in fact, be WrestleMania. Now, I realize they've done a rather poor job this year promoting WrestleMania, but seriously It's not lockdown. Come on. And he also essentially promised to come off the cage at lockdown. He said... Basically, I didn't, I didn't write this down word for word. He talked about his big dives and said he's had some big dives left in him. Yeah, he said, as far as those big dives, I've got a few left in me. You promised you were going to go off the cage at lockdown. Right. Maybe he'll be attached to a bungee cord when he does this. Scripting was fucking atrocious. Delivery was good. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's, there, were, there was some good stuff in here where he noted that during the whole hardcore history thing, which y'all thought was lame, turns out that was the intent because... Mick Foley, the character, hated to talk about his past, like he was old, washed up, and useless, which is how he was portrayed during those segments. That all made sense. And it's Mick Foley, so you know his delivery would be awesome. I'm just very, very confused in this feud about who I'm supposed to be cheering for. I guess that's true of all TNA segments. And they had a 20-man gauntlet match. Inside a steel cage. In a steel cage, yes. We'll talk about... Well, well let's start talking about it now. First off, 20 men at two-minute intervals is 40 minutes. Right? Well, two guys start, so it's 36 minutes, but it's still about 40. 36? It'd be 38. Uh, something like that. It's it's Anyway, this went 30 minutes. <laughs> something went awry. So they were lying. So, anyway, 30-minute, 20-man Royal Rumble in a cage. Now, obviously, the you couldn't throw anyone out of the fucking cage, cause, or out of the ring, because there was a fucking cage there. So it ended up being pinfall or submission eliminated people. And I guess the obvious question is, why was this in a cage? <laughs> There's no good answer for that. I mean, the idea of lockdown is you pay to see a bunch of cage matches. Right. Here they just gave us a cage match for free. For a half hour. That's like building up Elimination Chamber with a free Elimination Chamber on Raw. Yeah. Why in the hell would you do that? I don't know. So they had this match, and... I guess I'll just uh, read the order of elimination here from uh, Mr. Mr. Wrestling is our uh, is our source here. Uh, he always he does some good work with stats. We had uh, this was the order of entry very quickly. Abyss and AJ started. We had Shelley, Lethal, Saban, Morgan, Homicide, Steiner, Creed, Rhino, Jarrett, 
Uh, Tetsuya Naido, Kurt Angle, Shane Sewell, The Sheik, Booker T, Yujiro, Eric Young, Hernandez, and then finally, well, we'll get to the ending in a second. And then, of course, there were all the eliminations. Um, let's see, Angle eliminated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. He eliminated half the field. <laughs> Many of them very, very quickly, like complete jobbers. Yeah, he, he, there was. I was taking note here. There were not a lot of eliminations early. Like homicide went out, I think, but. By the time Angle got hit the ring, he was number 12 or 13, and there was like 10 guys in the cage, which you can imagine how useless this was. And I thought, I was thinking the whole time, somebody needs to clean house. Well, out came Super Kurt, and he came out and hit guys with the moves and pinned them, one after another, like like flies. And by the way, uh, they promised a new cage at Lockdown. <laughs> For those who are on the fence about ordering, it's going to be a new cage. It won't be that shabby old cage they had last year. No. Or the one that we saw tonight. No, this cage also will be put out to pasture, apparently. Now, Angle, before he got in the match, Jarrett came out at number 11, and Angle beat him up and smashed his shoulder with a chair. And they, you know, they had 45 security guys out there. Angle beat them all up. I have no idea where they hired these security guys from. The Indies, actually. Yes, Kurt Angle beat up at they least 20. just call them Indie guys. Indie geeks. Why call them security? I it makes know. you look so low rent. I mean, security is so impotent. They secure nothing. Viagra Security, they should call them, or something of that nature. So all these geeks come out, and Angle beats them all up. Jarrett's taken to the back. Angle gets in the ring, eliminates ten men. And uh, Hernandez was number 19. Number 20 ends up being Jeff Jarrett. He returns triumphantly. And by the way, before we get to that, there's... go ahead. Well, there's a ton of stuff in here. Um, this is a minor thing. It was just one line, but... Sheikh Abdul Bashir came in at whatever number he was. He's running down to the ring, and Mike Tanay says, Last we saw him last week, he was hanging upside down, being tortured by Samoa Joe. I guess somebody cut him down. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> you know, leave him hanging in the back of the impact zone for a week. <laughs> he felt the need to vocalize this. There was one. Uh, let's see, somewhere Get in... the Steiner thing, for Christ's sake. The Steiner thing. Okay, so the main event mafia's whole plan was that they would get Kurt to the end, and then he would be one of the last two guys, so he would be a partner. So it's down to uh, Kurt and Steiner alone in the ring. They It was them and Hernandez. Uh, he ran wild for them, but then finally got cut off and pinned. So he was number 19. So it's Kurt. Hold on, hold on. You're, you're missing the important point here. The point of this match was to determine the captains right. for lethal lockdown. That, that's what I was getting to. All right. So... The, 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 the idea was the last two guys are the captains, and then I guess they wrestle to determine who gets the advantage. I don't know what that means. I don't even know why they have to wrestle. I don't Should either. they just come down to two people? I have no idea. Okay, so so Angle said the winner gets the advantage. I presume that's the coin flip. Maybe I'm just totally wrong, and it's a psychological thing. Who gives a fuck? But the point was, it came down to, to um, Angle and Steiner and Hernandez. And, of course... The idea is if you if you eliminate this is exactly where I was going with this. Well, you you mentioned Steiner was pinned. I, I meant to say Hernandez. Okay. Well, anyway, so so uh, well, at, at that point, it's down to Kurt, and, Kurt Angle, Scott Steiner, and one more person. So if the goal is to get Angle to the final two, Scott Steiner should have just lay down and let Kurt pin him. Then Kurt wins the captainship. The main event mafia is the match, so they're all happy. But no, they stuck around to wait. Apparently, their goal was to make sure they were the last two, so Kurt would be one captain and Scott would be the other. Opposing each other. Yeah. Stupid plan. So anyway, it came down to uh, Jarrett coming out as number 20, and uh, he eliminated Steiner, but then Angle eliminated Jarrett. So it should be Angle and Jarrett as the captains. Right. But no. Number 21 came out. It was Samoa Joe. Don is screaming about how this is bullshit. Mike today then explains, Jeff Jarrett entered twice. So Jeff Jarrett was not number 20, he was number 19, and Samoa Joe actually is number 20. That makes sense. I nearly fell out of my chair that something actually made sense. There, there, there were 20 men involved. He had entered twice, yeah. so he was not number 20, he was only number 19. Well, not only that, but when the time he came out the first time, he never actually got in the ring. Yeah, so this actually made sense. There were, there were 20 combat, combatants, Jeff Jarrett made two entrances, but only 20 men to get stepped into the ring. So then uh, Samoa Joe pinned Angle very, very quickly because, you know, he's so fat. I guess they don't feel like he can go for more than a minute. Think about that. 
They are not confident well. in Joe going more than one minute. Samoa, Joe. <laughs> that, that, that is astounding. But he also, the, the point was that they wanted, they wanted an Angle to think he'd achieved ultimate victory, and then here comes, much to his surprise, a very fresh, very dangerous Samoa Joe. Angle had been resting at that point for, I don't know, eight minutes. So, so he was not fresh, and, and so here comes a very dangerous guy who killed him. I was fine with that part. It'll be 16 minutes, by the way. Whatever it was. Your math sucks today. I don't know what's happened. What has happened? I don't know. So anyway, they, uh, it, yep, so, uh, Joe pinned him, and this, I guess if you're going by the winner of this match gets the advantage, then that means we're gonna have a war games with the baby faces getting the advantage again, which would be the second time Vince Russo has done that. Which would be the perfect thing for TNA to do. They did that though, the last time. I've forgotten. The last time Russo had it booked so the baby faces started with the advantage. What fools. Just but, baffling. Well, if a regular man, I would say it's impossible. Uh, but but it's him, so it's it is possible. But yeah, I I was watching this. I did not think the advantage of the match was on the line until you brought it up on the show. Because if they mentioned it once, it was in one sentence in the opening promo, and I just missed it. So I was confused. I cannot figure out why the hell Kurt Angle was so pissed. He had achieved his goal. But he, he did he did a ranting, raving, angry promo backstage. He was spitting. He was his veins were popping out. I thought, dude, you got what you wanted. You're the fucking captain. And I guarantee they'll do a coin flip. I guarantee they're going to forget all about this. So anyway, I don't know why. I just don't know why. It's the usual teenage. I don't know why. He also claimed to eliminate Jeff Jarrett three times, which I have no idea what he's talking about. Um, but, uh, die. Well, once know. with a chair in the shoulder, once when he pinned him, three? Me? I don't know. He, he, he eliminated him as captain by pinning him. That's two eliminations. I see. Two eliminations in one. I don't know. Oh. He also claims he's a 12-time champion. Well, you have me there, sake. yes. So then they, they cut to Samoa Joe, who was sitting outside, and said he did not want to be captain. He just yeah. wanted to guarantee himself a spot in the match. And he was going to bring a knife. He's going to bring a knife, and he's going to torture the AMEM. That's what he said. I'm going to bring this knife right here. He, 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 actually, he said, I'm going to bring this. And he held up the unidentifiable bladed weapon. Why didn't he bring it tonight? I, I don't know. The man he hates was alone in a cage. Yes, he could have. Isn't now the time you bring your fucking knife? He could have disemboweled him. Anyway, that was TNA, everybody. That's a good show. That's, yeah, that's the best TNA show of the year. That's a good show right there. Mostly just because we had 38 total minutes of wrestling, which may never be achieved again by this program, until Vince Rosa decides to do another gauntlet match, which actually will probably be in about four weeks.